Do, do, do. I believe we're back. Yes, we are. Mark, you got it there? Looks like we're recording here. So, sorry about the technical difficulties. I apologize. Everyone, Cam Zondi back here uh, for the Cubs hockey. Uh, Okotoks Bison's going ahead 2 to nothing here in case you just joined us. Well, you just did. As uh, it looked like a shot from just inside the face-off circle. And it eludes uh, Schaefe here. No chance for him. And it's 2-0. Uh, Bison's here with 7.18 to go in the first period. 19-4 are the shots for the Bison's. Cubs really need a goal here. 2-0 Bison's. Here's a lead pass. Dean couldn't handle it. And it goes the length of the ice. So we got her back and rolling here. We'll make sure here if we can get the phones up and just check around. Uh, just a reminder, Black Folds and Red Deer in action tonight. Black Folds is leading that series three games to nothing. Uh, Cubs trailing two to nothing here. They really, really need a goal. Again, we're going to say hi to Shelly Mayer who couldn't be here today. Logan and Tanner's mom. Uh, Calvin Heller came over and said we need to wish her uh, a get well and to, to say a big hi from all the players and uh, parents here. And absolutely, I said, you betcha. I had that on number one on my list. So hi, Shelly. Give them some luck here. They're down by two, but definitely not out of it in this league as they're going to the power play here and maybe a chance to get back on the scoreboard. 19-5 are the shots. They're going to need some more if the Cubs are going to come back. 2 nothing. Bisons with 6.55 to go here in the first period. Boston Pizza power play coming up. Denver Dean's out there with Funk. They're going to change up personnel. They're going to put Brown up front to take the draw. He hasn't played up front for a while. He's with Jared Chanel and on the left side, Reese Duran. Mayer and Gallopo along the blue lines. All right, Cubs unable to get the draw. Okotoks will dump the puck back down the ice. Schaefer's out of that. He'll hold it in there. No chance for Schaefer on any of those goals. Gallopo's dumped. There's going to be a five on three. All right, hang on to your hats, Shelly Mayer, and everyone out there listening in Cubby Land, Brad Stones. There's a chance here. Five on three. Here's your chance to get back in this hockey game. It'll be a penalty coming here to... Looks like Jeremy Smith going off. Five on three. Cubs really got to get that power play going. It was one for five on Sunday. If they could strike one here, they're back in this hockey game. We'll see. Tripping is the call to Jeremy Smith. So, a minute 48. Five on three. This is a chance. Cubs win the draw. It goes to the corner. Bisons get it, though. Eddie Tracy, he'll lose it, and Tyler Hughes is going to hold on. Again, we apologize for the technical difficulties. We're uh, back on the air here. You're listening to Cam and Mark. Cam's on and Mark Keller. Mark, big chance here. They got a score. Yeah, you know, you're on a five on three. This is your best chance to get back in this game. Just get shots on uh, Tyler Hughes in net. Yeah, he hasn't faced too many, Mark. That's something they wanted to do is get more shots, but it's been all Bisons. Two nothing. 19 shots to six, but a chance on the power play. Funk comes in on the left wing side. 39 goal man during the season. Back to the point of the captain, Logan Mayer. He looks for a pass, looks, looks, waits. Goes over to Kyle Funk and look from the side. Funk shoots, goes off that side of the post. He didn't miss very much. Funk comes off the end wall, goes in behind the net, looking for a pass. Comes up on the right wing side, gets it back to Gallopo on the right point. Back to Funk on the right face of the circle. Comes off the half wall, puts it down deep. In there for Heller. Back to the point. Here's the shot. Gallopo had it block. Janelle picks it up off the corner. There's Janelle in the corner. Puts it down to Corey Brown. Brown back up front to Gallopo at the point. Gallopo, will he shoot? No. He's got a block in there. Gallopo over to Logan Mayer on the left side. Maybe it'll go back. Here's the shot. Save in there by Hughes. And no rebound. Cubs getting some shots in the power play. And that's the need to do. 50 seconds left on the five on three minute and two on the other one. One thing I'd like to see the Cubs do on this power play is just get Tyler Hughes moving cross ice, cross crease, and you do that, you keep him moving, he's gonna get tired, and eventually one will find the back of the net. Absolutely. Ben Fury, two goals in two games. He's out there right now on that left wing side. He's got Liam Janelle with him, but it's Phil Dillon who will get the puck out and shoot it down the ice. 40 seconds left and a five on three. Gallopo as the Cubs try to make some hand catch up in this hockey game. 2-0 Bisons, Gallopo dancing through center ice, he's in over the line, down the left wing side, here's Gallopo, looks for a pass, goes around the boards, Canyon couldn't handle it, but Logan Mayer was there, he goes over to Ben Fury, Ben Fury moving in, back to Logan Mayer on the right point, Logan Mayer moves in, backs off a bit, goes over to Ben Fury on the left side, Fury now, he's got the puck at the left point, 18 seconds left, still no shots, as the puck goes to the corner, Canyon just barely held it in there, Janelle's got it in the corner, that's Liam Janelle, back to Ben Fury, Ben Fury almost let it go past the line, and he keeps it in, just barely. Along the side wall, four seconds left. Here's Ben Fury out of the corner. 
He's looking to get a pass back to the point to Gallopo. Gallopo shoots through traffic. It's blocked in there. Goes to the corner. And the Bisons are going to get it and shoot it out towards center ice. Logan Mir couldn't pick it up in three seconds left. The Bisons killing off a five-on-three power play. Shot down the ice. And Schaefer will let that go. It's been blowing down here. So we're going to face off back. And the Bisons in 19 shots to seven. Norfolk and they're leading. 2 nothing with 4.38 to go in the first period. What a good penalty kill there by the Okotoks Bisons. They limited that 5-on-3 for the Cubs to one shot on net. They didn't give the Cubs no shooting lanes or passing lanes or nothing. And if you're the Cubs on that 5-on-3, you need to find the back of the net to get uh, yourself back into this game. Absolutely. Desperation times now. You can't fall behind three. As the puck goes deep into the medicine net end, Schaefer will play it around the boards. Corey Brown's going to bring it off the end wall. Gets it to Kyle Frakowski, chips it up towards center. Keeps going with it, and Cody Frakowski with a head of speed. He's in on the left wing side, and Arnholtz goes in behind that. Maybe he's got another gear here tonight to try to do some heroics. Bisons will chip the puck back out to center. Derek Chanel, he'll chip it forward, gets it over to Cody Farkowski. He dodges the check, goes back in his own end, throws a pass for Brown. Brown out to Janelle on the right left wing side. Janelle was met there by Zach Johns. Johns lost it though. Farkowski gets it back, goes to his brother. He dumps it in deep. Kyle Farkowski in the corner, 3.54 to go in the first period. 2 nothing Bisons as Cody Farkowski works with Kyle. Kyle's allowed to come right out, wrap around attempt. Good save in there. First big chance for the Cubs in a while. Maybe that will spark something here. The Farkowski brothers trying to get something going. Janelle picks off the pass. He'll chip it forward. Right up to Cody. Cody to his brother Kyle. Kyle flips it in. That was dumped in there. And the Bisons are able to ship the puck back to the Cubs line. Corey Brown now picks the puck up. Goes up on the left wing side. Feeds Cody. Cody's had a long shift. But he's working well with Marshall. Marshall now back to Farkowski. Back to Brown. Here's the shot. Save the rebound. And Kyle Farkowski had a chance there. And the play is blown down. I believe the net might have come off. It's moorings there. But a couple good chances marked by the Furkowski brothers and Marshall, and that's what they need to do. Yeah, you know, that line did a good job at cycling the puck down low. They created a couple scoring chances there, and one thing, if you're going to get back in this game, you need to do that. Absolutely. Mitch Heller out there. Looking to win the faceoff. He's up against Jordan Eady. Eady's had a great playoff so far. He has, I believe right now, my last look, 14 points in the playoffs. Yes. No, he has 12. Seven goals, five assists. Phil Dillon is the leader on the Bisons with 14. Seven goals, seven assists, and seven games. Unbelievable. Fallis in there with 10. So they have some big gunners on that team, and they're built for another playoff run. Shot Schaefer has trouble with it, but it's in his pads, and he holds on. 20 shots. 20 shots to eight. Bisons leading in that category. 2 nothing. the score. The Bisons leading. We'll get the full statistical summary recap with Mark Keller when we come come back here in the first intermission as we apologize again for the technical difficulties with the internet here tonight Cubs in need of a big big victory here tonight to prolong this series the Bisons don't want that they want to wrap it up and get ready for the winner of the other series that series going on tonight Black Falls has a chance to put the Red Deer Vipers away kind of a surprise there the Vipers very dominant team. Black Falls very good too, but didn't expect that series to be 3-0. Cubs chip the puck back up towards center. 240 left in the first period. Bison's up by a couple here. Two to nothing as Samuel comes back in the left wing side. He'll dump it in. Logan Mayer's got some trouble with Jordan Eady, but he rides him off into the board, puts the puck back towards the point. It's held in there by Onish. Onish now. Back to the right side. Tracy down low. Feeds it over to Phil Dillon. Back to the point to Tracy, to Phil Dillon. They play catch. Here's a shot. Big rebound. Scores at the side of the net. Jordan Eady was right there to collect the rebound. And again, Cole Schaefer has no chance on these. As that puck came right to Jordan Eady. Kind of a nice lucky bounce. He got it right off the pads. 3-0 Bisons. And 22 shots to 8 now for the Bisons. And Mark, is it time for, well, there's only 218 left. Is it time for a timeout? No, I, I wouldn't call one right now, seeing as how you only have two. You have two eighteen left in the first. You just go into the intermission. You just the coach should just talk to the players and just get them to call, settle down, get them back on their game plan. And Mark, we talked about this: the backing into the defense and even the forwards backing in on Cole Schaefer, and that kind of provides that screen from his own players too. As uh, these guys from Okotoks, you know, they're 
not scared to get in get in his way, get in his vision, and when you're backing in like that, you can't see the puck, can you? Exactly. You and know. you're letting him have lots of time. Yeah, and these last two games here against Okotoks, you, you could tell they're they're backing in, they're not giving Cole Schaefer much time to see the puck, to pick it up, and when he finally does pick it up, it's in the back of the net. And you have to do that when you got a goal like Cole Schaefer, right, Mark? 918 save percentage. I mean, he combined Okotoks' goals. Not that they've been they've uh, been mediocre or anything. They've been pretty good, but they're only at 890, and Schaefer's at 918. And he hasn't won a game in this series. That's pretty good, isn't it, Mark? Oh, yeah. It's tremendous it's for a team that's down three games and nothing. But one thing with the Cubs team there, you just want to keep the Okotoks to the outside and let Cole Schaefer see everything Okotoks throws on that because you do that you know he's gonna he's know he's gonna save 99 percent of the shots there absolutely 128 to go in the first period the Bisons with a healthy three to nothing lead they're putting their stamp on this first period so far showing that they don't want to play another game Schaefer holding the Cubs in there the Cubs really really need a goal here to get back into this one boy they had a good chance in that five on three to capitalized but unable to do it Bison's a strong penalty kill the Forkowski brothers have played a really good hockey game here tonight and they're out there with uh, Marshall now he's got uh, yep he's got them out there now they've been the best line here tonight for the Cubs had a couple scoring chances but a couple good shots that Cole Schaefer he's had no chance on all three of the goals none of were his fault here tonight I know some of them won't be on video but I could tell you none of her his fault a couple well, uh, we're, when the Cubs were back in a little bit and a little bit of traffic and just perfect shots. They're picking corners here a little bit. Right in the slot there again, shot by, saved by Schaefer and Mark. There you saw it again, letting them cut right through the slot. They've got to see if they can contain that and not back in so much. Yeah, you know, just going to, like I was saying, got to keep them to the outside, but they did a good job there at letting Cole Schaefer see that shot. Yeah, he did see the puck there as it's on the corner. Mickelson just drops. One of the Cubs players in there, that was Marshall. Might have got his elbow up, not sure, but crunches him against the wall. Fakowski taking on his heart against the board. 25 seconds to go here. Cubs desperately needing to get out of this period and try to regroup in the dressing room. And maybe Captain Logan Merrimark will have something good to say here and he can spur the troops on. And if they can get that first goal in the second period, then anything's possible here. Yeah, you know, not only are your captains and assistants going to step up and say something in the dressing room, but you know Brad Cobb and Blaine Fomoratis they're also going to say say something to get them going And but if you're the Cubs you just need to keep it simple in that second period stick to your game plan, get shots on Tyler Hughes, he's only had eight so far and yep. you know if you get more shots you might catch him by surprise there because who knows with only eight shots he might be a little bored of net down there yeah, and you know what, Mark? Maybe take the body a little bit more, you know? The Forkowski brothers were hitting them, and boy, uh, Okotoks has taken some liberties on some of the Cub players, and if you're able to do that, that physical presence, you know, can wear you out. As the buzzer sounds to end the first period, 26 shots to 8 in the first period. Cole Schaefer, a busy man, he makes 23 saves. The Bisons go out of the first period, leading 3 to nothing after 20 minutes, and they really put their stamp on that first period. Cubs are going to want to come back in the second period and get a goal here to get back on the score sheet and get something going and feel good about themselves here heading into the second period. All right, Cam Zondi and Mark Keller are streaming live here at the Kinplex for game number four, do or die for the Cubs. We'll see what happens here in the second period, but Mark, one thing we know, Cubs got to get more shots and generate a little bit more offense. Yeah, you know, and that's going to come that's going to come as the game gets on and you get more shots on Tyler Hughes and Nett, like I was saying, you know, eight shots. Eight shots on net and you, you're not going to score any with only eight shots like we were saying. And like, like I'd like to see them is just move Hughes side to side and just get traffic in front. Well, yeah, and you know what? Uh, he hasn't had a lot of shots this whole series and, uh, you know, maybe if they can get some traffic, like you said, we've been talking about this, and uh, really got to force it here. And look at this, Mark, behind the bench here. You see Cole Schaefer sitting with, uh, looks like, is that Tanner Mayer or Kyle Funk? Uh, I believe that's Kyle Funk. And I can tell they're not happy. We've seen Funk. I saw Funk do that in High River last year when the Cubs lost uh, their last game, and we're while well, second last game, we're eliminated from the playoffs. And I know Funk is a very emotional guy, and he really 
doesn't like to lose and look at that you can tell the emotion there and you just can tell those guys are gonna have a better second period oh yeah for sure you know just in that first period you could tell they got after that first goal was in on Cole Schaefer you could tell not his fault no no he's doing no, everything no, he can you know, and you can you can tell they kind of just got rid of their game plan there and they just wanted to just try to sit back and protect that one nothing lead for Okotoks but you can't when you're, do that. When you're no when you're uh, losing one nothing you got to step on the gas and def just try to get shots on Hughes and get that puck in the offensive zone absolutely well mark we'll see what the second period brings 3 nothing Okotoks after 20 minutes you're listening to Cam Zondi and Mark Keller on Beefeater State Coast Cubs hockey on the World Wide Web MedicineCubs.com. We'll be back in just a few moments.
All right, back here for second period action. Cubs down by three goals here, three nothing. Okotoks. After 20 minutes, shots on goal, 26 to eight for the Okotoks Bisons and 23 saves for Cole Schaefer. Shelly Mayer, if you're watching out there, big hello again to you. That's uh, hopefully Logan had something good to say in that first intermission here. I, like we said, we saw Kyle Funk and goaltender Schaefer. They're sitting on the bench a little bit. Demoralized, upset, and maybe that's gonna spur some emotion in the second period. Nothing is done yet. Cubs need that goal. If they could get that, they could build on it. We'll see what happens. Other action tonight, Red Deer and Black Falls. The Wranglers with a stranglehold. Three games to nothing, series lead on Red Deer. We're back here at the Kenplex. One more time, hoping for more. Cubs need to pull it all the stops. They've dug a hole in the series. They've dug a hole in this one. But nothing is said until the third period's done. We know in junior hockey anything can happen. All right. Again, in case you just joined us, uh, we had some technical difficulties tonight. We went through that uh, Sunday game when the Cubs lost 4-2. Very close game. Um, ben Fury scored from Liam Janelle and Cody Farkowski early in that one at 2.54, and the Cubs were up 1-0. Bison's got a 5-on-3 power play, and they were able to capitalize on both. Okay, good. That horn is done as uh, Matt Howitt from Kevin Mickelson and Brony Eisenbrenner tied the game at 17.52. Late goals in that first period. And then in 1931, on the tail end of the power play, only four seconds left. Spencer Samuel from Chase Faust and Jeremy Smith put the Bisons up 2-1. Cubs would get the only goal in the second period to tie the game up. Farkowski would score for Marshall and Gallopo on the power play. It was tied 2-2 after 40 minutes. And the third period, uh, a screenshot, Zach Baba with 2.32 left. Uh, puts a shot on that. Schaefer did not see it. And Bryce Honest drawing an assist. Bison's going up 3-2. They would score on the empty net to put the game away 4-2. Phil Dillon from Fallis and Howard at 19-02 and come away 4-2. Winner shots were 39-16. Bison's, they were 2-5 for five on the power, but that was the difference in that game. 1-5 for five Cubs. Cubs had a 5-on-3 tonight, unable to score. So in this one, that was Sunday night's game, and they went down 3-0. And in this game, the Cubs are trailing 3 to nothing, but at 5-on-3, looming huge as they were unable to score. We'll see what happens in the second period. Hughes will leave it in behind his own net in there. And the Bisons come up towards center. Johnson gets that, and he'll fire it in. We expect the charged-up Cubs team throwing everything but the kitchen sink at these guys. We'll see what happens. Bisons ship the puck up towards center ice. Fallis couldn't get it now, but it, it's uh, Loomer. He'll get the puck along that blue line. Loomer, ever so dangerous, comes in, takes a shot. Johnson blocked it in there. Fallis picks it up to Loomer. Right out in front, he shot it through the crease and almost eluded Schaefer from that glove side pat. As the puck's in the corner now, Bison's cycling in the corner there. Logan Mayer unable to get Fallis, but Forkowski came back and made a good defensive play. Boy, Forkowski's had a good period. Well, a good first period and a good minute here in the second. Him and his brother and Marshall have been really competitive here tonight. Mayer made a good play. Schaefer... Had to make a save, though, as the puck came from the blue line. Another shot in there. Marshall's blocked. He's got it. Here's Marshall in. On Hughes. Marshall goes in, shoots. Hughes the save rebound, and he shoots it wide. Oh, Marshall had a glorious scoring opportunity to get back, and then he goes in and runs the captain there. Uh, good play by Marshall there on that penalty, or not penalty shot, sort of that breakaway. He had a great chance, and he got his own rebound. Unable to net one here. Cubs, maybe you're spurred on. Brown keeps it in. Gets it to Funk in behind the net. Puck comes out in front. You know Kyle Funk won't give up. I know how much fire that guy has under his belt. Puck goes around the boards. Funk's in after it again, but it's going to be met by Chase Fallis. Fallis in there. He'll get to it. He'll rip it off the wall. It's blocked in there. Dean held it in. Dean now. As the puck goes back up towards center ice, that'll be an icing call. Good shift there from the Cubs mark after Marshall had a clear-cut breakaway and unfortunately just missed. 18-11 to go here in the second period. Cubs... Trailing by three. Oh, that was huge. If Marshall could have scored there, it would have brought him back. But there's going to be a penalty here now. Who's it going to go to? Be a four on four. All right. Referee's pointing to four on four. Kyle Funk's going to get it. And boy, when Kyle Funk gets a penalty, you better write that down or take notice. He never gets too many penalties. Around the Western Hockey League tonight, the Lethbridge Hurricanes have decided they want to play some hockey. They're up two to one on the Kootenai ice in the second period. That might help the Tigers. But Brandon defeated the Prince Albert Raiders 4-1. Boy, if you're 
anybody who's playing the Raiders in the first round, boy, you're looking at your chops. The Raiders just seem to have hit rock bottom lately. I don't know. And such a good talent on that team, but unable to get it going. Thanks to Raiden Malsbury for showing me those uh, out-of-town scores here. And Mark, what's wrong? What happened to the PA Raiders? Oh, I'm, I'm not really sure, but PA, you know, going into the playoffs, they have to go against a proven netminder with Luke Siemens and Prince Albert, so they're going to have their hands tough. Yep. 27-10, the shots. Okotoks, we've played two minutes and 22 seconds of the third period. Cubs down by three, and, you know, Marshall had a great chance to score. He was, he's been one of the best players on the ice tonight. Yeah, you know, not only him, but Cody Flakowski and Kyle line, Flakowski. Eh? Wow, they just cycling putt, just ch getting chance, and Marshall, he came in all alone, and Tyler Hughes had his five-hole open, and Josh Marshall seen that, he's looking his chops, and tried to go, but Hughes just shut the door and closed them. Yep. Maybe wanted to go a little bit higher there, but Hughes read him with the pads and makes a save. He's got those brown pads. They're pretty sweet, actually, down there. As the puck comes up towards the left side, Eddie Tracy, he can really wheel in the back and blows the tire. Liam Janelle gets it, and he'll backhand it down the ice. Cubs are going to end up killing a penalty. The referee had said four on four, but that was not the case here as Funk is the only person who gets the penalty. So a minute left here and a big penalty kill for the Cubs. Maybe that'll draw some emotion here and get something started, some sort of rally point as the puck goes off the end boards now. Shot wide of Schaefer. Cubs will send the puck back to center. It's 48 seconds left in the penalty. Eddie Tracy's back. He's over for Anish. Anish comes in offside with 42 seconds left in the penalty. Early in the second period, 3-0 the score here. The Cubs trail the Bisons in the series and in the game here. And Mark... Cubs need to kill this one off, and they really, really need to get it going, and they can have some more uh, shifts like they did there with Marshall and Forkowski and Funk. You know what? Anything can happen. They, they need something to get that momentum back on this side, and, you know, if Josh Marshall would have scored that, that momentum would have been there. They, they would have been buzzing, and, you know, they got one past him, and, you know, they could get more. Absolutely. Well, we do know that Hughes is a good goaltender, but he can be beat, so we'll see. He's been the backbone so far. Only had to face 10 shots. Schaefer on the other end has faced 27. Good penalty killing by Florkowski. Wow, is he bringing it tonight. 12 seconds left as the puck comes up towards center. Again, here comes Phil Dillon. Can we bring a stop? Watch out. we got to see how long this guy plays. Right on front, they score! Power play goal there, and there you go. Phil Dillon to Jordan Eady, and it's in the back of the net. And these guys don't mess around. they really showing why they've been to Provincials the last couple of years and almost won Provincials. They said they're built... This year for a provincial run and a possibility of taking it in Wainwright. And boy, they're putting a stamp on this one tonight. This has really been the only game that the Cubs have really fallen behind by a lot of goals. They only lost each game by a goal or two. And here tonight, it's all Bisons up by four. As the puck is cleared back into Medicine Hat territory. Now it's back out at center. Hagel's on it. Cubs really need a goal right now as Hagel comes in. Hagel goes around his man there. Maybe... Chips it right out in front. Maybe a chance there, but no cigar. 4 nothing Bisons, in case you just joined us. On their 28th shot, it was Jordan Eady scoring his 8th <clears throat> goal of the playoffs. Hagel now down the left wing side. He'll shoot off the shoulder there. Didn't miss by much. Sites is on it in the corner. <coughs> Back for Janelle. Back to the point. Heller. Heller puts it down low to Hagel. He tries to center. He's got Janelle in there. Janelle right out in front. Sites couldn't tap at home there. And the Bisons will start back. Two on two. Ripping down the right wing side. Here's a shot. Schaefer will make that save. And no rebound. Shot coming in there from Dylan Boyd. Boyd's only played two games in this playoffs. And Mark, uh, boy, that fourth goal really hurts. Yeah, you know, they're about four seconds away from killing that. Must have been a double minor. Penalty kill and just a tough goal to give up. You're down four nothing. But from here on out, you just want to win each period here from here on out. Yep, 4 nothing penalty coming up. And I believe Chris Schlinker is going to call another one on the Cubs here. They did have the puck last. Kyle Frakowski is going to go off. And you just can't give that power play any sort of momentum on that side. It'll burn you. These guys really want to finish it off here tonight. And they're up by four. A chance to add to that lead and really put the stamp of approval on this series. But hopefully the Cubs can... Find a rally point here and kill this one off. 
29-10 are the shots. They need to get some more shots, but first they're killing off a penalty. Farkowski will get the slashing penalty. Puck goes through the crease out to their side. Bison's coming close. They got it at the point. Mickelson, he moves the puck so well. Back to the light side. Here's Anish. Anish now. Willie said it. No, Howitt gets it. Howitt back to Mickelson. Over to Howitt. Howitt. Cross crease pass. There's a nice one shot. Schaefer makes the save on the side corners. Jeremy Smith ever so dangerous coming in from that back door. Smith with nine points and yeah, as we go down the list here, you got Spencer Samuel, eight points in seven games. This is all in seven games. Jeremy Smith, nine points. Chase Fowles, 10. Jordan Eating out 13. Phil Dillon, and 15 and counting. And there might even be more than that, but they had a lot of guys at almost two points a game here and a point a game. So very dangerous, very dangerous. Kevin Mickelson hasn't scored a goal, but he's provided seven assists from the blue line. So his team built, has three solid lines and one good checking line. And... Boy, they can sting you hard. Back to the point. Comes to the corner now. Off the face-off circle. Pass right on front. It's deflected. Good play in there by Florkowski. He's had a good game, Cody Florkowski. And he gets the puck now. He'll intercept it. Can't get it out. Yes, he does, says the linesman. And it'll be Tanner Mare backing him up and dumping it the length of the dice. 4-0. Bisons with 14.30 to go here in the second period. Cubs killing off another penalty. A minute left in that. If they have any hope of coming back in this one, they're going to have to stay out of the box. Up towards center, Jeremy Smith winds. Jeremy Smith goes to the right. He drops the pass over right out in front back door and almost tapping it in there was Chase Fallis as he came in from that right side. Bison's back to the point now. They moved the puck so well in the power play. Tracy now over to Loomer. Down low to Fallis. Backhand shot. Schaefer makes a good save. Good clear in there by Tanner Mary. Saved a goal. Shoots it to the corner. 35 seconds left. Cubs holding on here just by a thick thin. Here's another great save in there by Schaefer. Another shot. And he makes another save there. Oh my goodness. Pad save after pad save. This guy hasn't given up at all. No, you know, just tremendous four saves right there. Four saves. The first one got deflected and he had to be uh, quick with this pad and just spread eagle, saved another one, another one. He finished it off by getting a shot in the bread basket. Yep, maybe those saves can spur out a goal. That's what they need. 20 seconds left here away from getting on to this penalty. Puck comes back to the point. Boy, did they move it around really good. Almost as the puck comes back to the point now. Held in there along that right wing side. Penalty almost over. Eisenbrenner couldn't hold it. Now it is. Back to the point again. Here's a shot off Schaefer's midsection. Goes to the corner and cleared out by Funk. He takes an extra hit and Kyle Farkowski's back. Cubs have killed it up. 33 shots. You're hearing it right. In 27 minutes. 33 shots. Schaefer's face has made 29 saves. Bison's are as the referee calls another penalty here and I believe is it going to be another Medicine Hat Cup penalty yep Denver Dean's going to go and boy oh boy this one's going to be for boarding well we talked about it earlier you can't be doing this kind of thing and wanting to be hanging around in the hockey game and another call here we'll put the Bisons and give them some more momentum they're up by four and looking for more as that one rhymes. Back towards the point. Fury picks it off. Can't get it out. Dylan Gripe keeps it down low. Puts it off the wall. It'll be a boarding call to Denver Dean with 13 minutes left. The only problem with all the penalties is it's burning out your players and it's killing off a lot of the clock. As the puck comes back towards center, Eisenbrenner's on it. He retreats back. A minute 40 left in the power play. Eisenbrenner as the Bisons get the puck back up towards center ice. Here comes Fair on the right side. Fair goes in deep. Is he going to pass it out front? Does. Hits perfect. Pass in the shape for the save. Rebounds loose. And they shoot it through the crease out the other side. A couple good saves by Schaefer. Eisenbrenner's on it. It's all Okotoks here. They're throwing everything at him. It's like a hurricane as the Bisons continue with the puck. And now we'll get a whistle here. And I believe the puck came out of play. We'll get a face up outside. And Mark, they're buzzing like a tornado. Well, you can't keep taking penalties. No, you know, they've taken three straight penalties and they're one for two so far and you just got to stay disciplined and one thing with the penalty kill, you just got to um, watch where the, not, you can't uh, watch the puck, you got to just find the body and take it. Absolutely, 12-26 to go in the second, 35-10 the shots in favor of Okakoks, Cubs down by four, they're looking at killing off a penalty, it comes up to Samuel on the left wing side, a minute 10 left in it. The goal scorer just lately was Jordan Eady. Back to the point now. 
Greip, he'll move in. Goes over to the right side, Arnholtz. Arnholtz comes off the wall. Arnholtz goes in now to Bloomer. Pass right across. Good play in there by Gannon to get a stick on that and prevent the pass. Good defensive play. Greip lost it now. Gannon off the wall. He is tripped up there, and they've got that one. There's going to be a penalty there as the pick play right at the blue line there. Dylan Greip took down Gannon, and that'll relieve some of the pressure. And the Cubs are going to end up with a minute and 12 of power play time, and they're going to need that. And that'll be in 48 seconds. So, we'll play 4-4 four and four for 48 seconds. Faceoff comes to the right side of Tyler Hughes. 4 nothing. Bisons in control of this hockey game. In control of the destiny. Cubs trying to chip away. Just chip away with a good shift. Maybe get a goal here or two in this period. And try to come back. Back to the point now. Johnson puts it towards the front of the net. Gannon couldn't get it. It was blocked in there nicely by how it is. The puck comes up on the right wing side and it's dumped deep into the Bison's end. Dillon's on it in the corner. Phil Dillon has got it in behind the net there. Puts it over on the right side to Johns. Right out in front it comes. Battles behind the net now as it's deflected. Edie tried to get it out front. It was blocked and there. Cubs are able to relieve the pressure. Get it out to center. 16 seconds left in the four on four. Cubs love a minute 12 power play. But here comes Mickelson down the right wing side. Mickelson goes wide around the net looking right out in front and they score! Nobody took Phil Dillon in front of the net, and it's 5 to nothing. Oh, Mickelson goes for a skate in behind the net, throws it right out in front, and Phil Dillon, Johnny on the doorstep, he roofs that one on Schaefer, and again, you can't uh, blame Schaefer for any of these goals here tonight. It is not his fault. 5 nothing. just some, honestly, some bad neutral uh, defensive zone coverage. Just some plays where Bison's players are going to the greasy areas. They're getting in the front of Schaefer there and they're getting open and some missed assignments and there you go five to nothing Bison's mark like we said Bison's are getting to the scoring areas yeah you know the, the Bison's they're a dangerous team they had a high goals for in the regular season and they're definitely showing why tonight they're the top team in the league well and you can't leave Phil Dillon all in front of the net there un unguarded no not at all that's a missed know. assignment Mark not only that but you can't let uh Kevin Mickelson no, walked good, behind good. and that just yep. free with it and find an open Phil Dillon. And w would you agree that Cole Schaefer's been kind of hung out to dry on some of these? I, none oh. of them are his fault. Oh, yeah, for sure, you know. One thing I noticed about the whole team, they've been caught watching the puck and not communicating back there. Yep. It's an all-breakdown. Funk loses a shot towards the point. Schaefer makes that save, goes to the corner, 37 shots now. His way, Gallopo gets hit in there. Schaefer will play it to the corner. Cubs are on the power play, but they can't get out of their own end. Now Funk is up at center. Here comes Funk. In over the line. Funk. Can he make something happen? Another penalty coming up as the Bisons will be short two men here. And if you ever wanted a time for a comeback, you need one now on the 5-on-3. Another one for 39 seconds. So, it's time to make some A. Samuel will get the penalty. 5 nothing Bisons. And the Cubs are on the 5-on-3. So maybe they could pot one here. And get some luck to change, to turn in their favor. We'll find out. Funk's going to stay out there. He's been the catalyst of many comebacks here tonight. Logan Mayer out there on the left wing's left point. Funk gets the face off from Brown. Brown back on the face off circle. He's so good up there. He's been playing defense all year, but really good. Right to Funk. Here's the shot. Hughes makes the save right on. Cubs going right to the attack there. Good pass there from Janelle to find him. That was a good chance there to score as the Cubs trying to older players, catalyst there Derek Janelle doesn't want to be his last game neither does Corey Brown or Logan Marin all three of them are out there right now 5 on 3, the Logan Marin on the left side Logan goes over to Forkowski in the middle he'll wind, fire blocked and that one's got a smart as Logan Mayer comes off the wall, puts it in deep. Now 18 seconds left. Brown back to Forkowski. Forkowski doesn't get a chance to fire. Puts it wide of Mayer. Mayer now with 12 seconds. Down to Brown. Back to Mayer on the left point. Here's Mayer now. He goes to Forkowski. Will they shoot? No. Back to Mayer. His pass not on. Mayer now to Forkowski. Will he shoot? No, he doesn't. Two seconds left. Wines fires. Puts it off of Funk and they shoot it down the ice. Oh, big misfire there. Puck comes off the wall. Schaefer missed it, but it... Luckily came right out in front. 113 left. Forkowski back in his own end. Bison's up by five. As Brown can't get the puck at center ice. Funk's on it though. He's down the right wing side. Funk's heading for the net. Funk shoots. Oh, he didn't miss by much as he pulled the old toll drag there. What a play by Funk. He's trying to get something going now. Tracy up towards center. He's going to beat Corey Brown. It's a two on one. Tracy comes in. Waits. 
Drops it back. Good play in there to Howard as they try to kill the penalty off. 50 seconds left. Howard, nobody taking him. He'll take a shot at the net and he'll go wide. Comes off the end ball but out of play. 40 seconds left. 43 to be exact on the power play for Medicine at 37. 11 of the shots for the Bisons and Hal Funk almost made it happen there for the Medicine Hat Cubs with the toe drag and just put it over top of the net. We'll see now. Hagel, he's out there with Seitz and Heller as Brad Cobb changes up here looking for some life from his team here. They really have backed in here and you know they really need a goal. As the puck comes up on the right side, unable to get it and it's dumped back in. The Medicine Hat Schaefer will leave it in there. 9 7 to go in the second period. 27 seconds in the power play. That pass intercepted goes back in the medicine and Austin Gallup who's on it. He comes out of his own end. Gallup up towards the blue line. Here's Gallup now. He's got Heller with him. Gallup takes it in on the left wing side. Gains the line. Shoots. And Hughes has that one only. The 12th shot on the net so far. And now he might be getting another Bison's penalty. We'll see Hagel's in there. He's mad at somebody but maybe if he just kind of gets out of there. We could have a five on three, maybe. Yeah, he does. Cooler heads prevail. Good play by Hagel to get out of there. As the Cubs are going back in a five on three mark, they got to score. They've had how many five on threes here tonight? And that's three, says Tim. And they really, really need to pot one here. Mark's doing some stats here. So with 13 seconds left in the five on three, I'll keep yakking at you. Heller's in there to take the draw. Good to see Heller and Sites playing out there. And now the Bisons will clear it to the line. Johnson made a good play to keep it in there. He makes another good play. Sites will shoot the puck. It'll go into the stands there and out of play. Mark, they got to make some hay here. Another five on three. Yeah, you know, this is the third five on three tonight. And just unfortunately, they've maybe gotten two or three shots so far. And that's got to change. You need to, you need to capitalize on these five on threes if you want to come back here in this game. Yeah. Dug himself a huge hole. Now can they climb out of it? We'll see. Dallas will get the puck out, back and it out. Now the puck is going to drop there. Schaefer pokes it away. He made a great play there. And now he's caught at the blue line, though, and it'll be dumped back in. Dallas didn't have anywhere to shoot it. 138 left in the power play. Samuel steals the puck in there from Gallopo. Gallopo rides him off. Nicely good play to Johnson. Johnson rips it off the wall. He hits Matt Seitz up towards center. He drops it for Heller. Heller will take it up towards center himself. Heller in over the line on the right wing side. Gets bodied in there by Faust. Still going with a good play in there. Hagel helps him out. Puck goes in behind the net. Now Hagel's got it. He's looking for a pass the front. Makes a good play to go to the left side. Hagel looking to set it up. Minute 16 left in the power play. Caw putting out that fourth line. The energy line here. And they're actually doing a really good job moving that puck. As the puck is shot towards the front of the net, Mickelson gets it, can't get it out. Austin Gallup will keeps it in, freezes it along the boards. Now he's got Heller with him. Heller's in there digging for it. Can't get it out. Austin Gallup has some trouble. Logan Mayer's over there. He'll chip it around the boards. Good play by Logan to keep that puck in. Hughes has got it. He'll shoot it around the boards. Logan Mayer's going to have it. He'll put it around the boards again. 50 seconds left. Matt Seitz in behind the net. Over to Hagel on the left side. Hagel right out in front. It's tipped by the goaltender, Hughes. Yeah, uh, good play there by Logan Mayer to pinch in to keep the puck down low, but now the Bisons will start out. Mickelson puts the pass too far for Samuel. Gallup will go back in his own end with 34 seconds up. Heller comes off the ice now, and they'll get some new recruits out there. It's Kyle Flakowski with his brother Cody. Also stepping on the ice for the Cubs is uh, Josh Marshall. It's picked up by Jeremy Smith. He's heading for that. Smith shoots. Saving there by Schaefer, and the puck goes to the corner. Now back to the point. Here comes Fukowski. He'll pick it up with the head of steam. He's got his brother with him on the right wing side. Puts it to Kyle. Kyle's got to step on Tracy. Kyle to the front of the backhand pass, and Cody couldn't get his stick down there to tip it in. Good play there by the Fukowski brothers. Really been impressed with the way they've been playing tonight. As the puck comes up towards the center, uh, or the line there, and Janelle unable to hold it in, and the Bisons again have killed off another penalty, and wow, that's three five on threes they've killed off here tonight. Definitely one of the stories of this hockey game. Penalty killing and power play of the Bisons and just really a good start as Hughes leaves it in behind the net. 5-0 the score. The Bisons in complete control. Marshall, he's had himself a good game. Had a breakaway. Maybe if he just scored when it was 3-0 it would have brought the Cubs back to within 2 and that would might have been a huge part of this game but they're not giving up as the puck comes towards the front of the net now. Farkowski almost tipped that home and Kyle goes in there and gets a Good hit on Zach Johns, but it's Jeremy Smith now up towards center. Jeremy Smith allowed to walk right in. Puck bounces in there. Marshall gets it. Marshall now 
up towards the line. Corey Brown backs him up. Lead pass to Mara. Flakowski was going in there. He tips it in. Noice and called. Almost a chance in the breakaway. Janelle lets that puck go by him. He knows Marshall's there. Now he goes in, hits his man along the boards, but it's the Bisons who come out four strong towards center ice. It's a four on one. Smith drop over. Back to Smith. Right out in front. Schieffer has to make the poke check. Good save in there as the Cubs were caught flat footed there. They're trying to gamble now, right? That's what they're trying to do to get some goals here. Puck right on. Schieffer makes that save. And 40 shots on Cole Schaefer. He's made 35 saves. 5-0 the score. The Bison's leading with 5.43 to go here in the second period. You're listening to Cam Zotti, Mark Keller on Beef Eater State Coast Cubs Hockey. Oak Tokes, they've done a good job at uh, just killing off those 5-on-3s. Cubs have had three 5-on-3s and Oak Tokes just controlling the play. and That's not what you need here in the South Division Championship. Absolutely. This has been the only game that's really been a lopsided affair so far. Every other game has been one or two goals. So, you know, Bison's got off to that good start here early, and they've never looked back, but Cubs are trying to maybe get a couple here before this period's over. Still time, 529 in the second period. Anything can happen. They just really need one to fall here, and maybe the net will fill. We'll see. L Liam Janelle, he's on the faceoff, gets it back to the point. Logan Mayer couldn't hold it in. He'll flip it forward. Gagnon has to let that go. That would have been an offside. Puck dumped in the Okotoks end. Dylan Gripe comes out of his own end with it. Puts the pass up for Tyson Arnolds. He's down the left wing side. Arnolds, he'll dump the puck in. They'll go around the net pass. Schaefer now and picking it up is Zach Johns. Johns keeps it in down low. It's picked up by Johnson. Johnson almost fed Gagnon. Gagnon just missed it. He'll go the length of the ice. No icing. Hughes is out to play it. He'll rip it around the boards. Picked up there by Ben Fury. He's got the puck on the left, right side. Right out in front. Bang away. They score! There you go! Tyler Gagnon gets the loose puck and slaps it in. It's 5-1. All right. Tyler Hughes misplays it. Flips it around the boards. Good play by Ben Fury to throw it to the front. Tyler Gagnon slapping it in. It's 5-1. Cubs are on the board with 4.57 left. Tyler Gagnon from Ben Fury. And they have some life, maybe, back on the scoreboard with 12 shots on net. 5-1. And you know what, Mark? They all count. They need goals now. There you go. Gagnon exactly. gets it. Exactly. You know, and there's a good, feed, is a good feed by Ben Fury to Tyler Gagnon to get the Cubs on the board. And this is, this is junior hockey. Anything can happen. Throw the puck on net. We've said it all game. We've said it all series. There you go. Big rebound, unfortunately, for Hughes. He gives it away. 5-1 now. The Cubs are back on the scoreboard. So they take that goose egg off. Big goal for Gannon from Fury. And we'll see what happens now. Still, 4.57 to go here in the second period. Mark, if they can get the second goal of the period, then you never you never know. Yeah, you know, they want to just build on that, that goal. They want to just keep going and get shots on Tyler Hughes and, more importantly, try to get some past them. Yep. Fuck no. Lost the puck. Mickelson's up towards center. 5-1 Okotoks. Mickelson shoots. He didn't miss by much Durant. He'll come off the wall. Funk is steaming ahead there now. Cubs trying to take some chances here. Big hit at center ice. Pull. Austin Gallopo runs over Mickelson. As Jordan Needy comes back. Another good play. But wow. Gallopo with a big hit after the goal. Funk's trying to get up there on the breakaway. You can see that. He's Mir tried to spring him there. But Nicholson, he gets by Tanner Mayer. The puck is in the skates. Now Tanner made a good play to get back on the back check there as Jordan Eady goes to the attack. Jordan Eady walks through Funk. There's going to be a penalty here. And I believe Schlinker has caught Kyle Funk for a trip here. Well, that's a little questionable, but, you know, Kyle. Mark, when does Kyle, Kyle Funk get two penalties in one game? That's kind of a, a rarity. Did get his stick out a little bit there. And... Unfortunately, Kyle's going to get called here, and the Cubs are back on the penalty kill. So, unfortunate when you're trying to come back in this one. 5-1 the score. Okotoks in up by four. Out shooting the Cubs 40-12. to But, we'll see. Maybe a good penalty kill here. And you never know. Still 4-8 left in this one in the second period. Keep your fingers crossed if you're a Cubs fan out there. If you're a Bisons fan, you... You're still comfortable, you're happy. You got the series lead and you got the lead in this one. As Samuel now goes to Phil Dillon off the end wall. Phil Dillon picked up in there by Hellery. Just unfortunately couldn't clear it out of there. It's held in there by Anish now over to Phil Dillon. Phil Dillon, ever so dangerous, has a goal in this one. Back to the point, nobody wants it. The puck goes back into the center ice area. Minute 30 left in the power play. Hagel doing a good job out there on the penalty killing roll. Now Janelle will ship it back up to center. 
Okotoks having some trouble getting organized here as the Cubs dump the puck down the ice. Minute 20 left here. As Heller is chasing down uh, Edie, and there you go. Heller and Hagel doing a good job. They kind of run into each other, but they get the puck in deep. Now Samuel down the right wing side. He's got a head of steam. Wow. Puts on the afterburner. Samuel shoots. Good play by Janelle as he makes his 401st block of the season. Puck comes up towards center ice. Hagel, he's sprung on the right wing side. Hagel's going in. Hagel gets a step on Tracy. Backhand shot. No penalty called there as Hagel looked like he was hooked up. Puck will come off the end. Well, good penalty killing by Hagel and Heller. and Very stingy out there. Shutting down the Bisons there. And maybe that goal has spurred something here. I don't know. We'll see. Brown picks it off now. And he ships it back in. 40 seconds left in the power play. 240 to go in the second period. Bisons with a healthy 5-1 lead. In behind his own net now is Onish. Onish over to Edie. Edie up on the left wing side to Tracy. Boy, is he ever... Wheeling there. Tracy now tries to get it to Edie. Edie off the end boards. Johnson's got him pinned up in there. And good play by Johnny. But the puck was unable to be cleared by Liam Janelle. Back to the point. They're going to get a shot. Shane for the save. Big rebound in there. Johnny clears it out of there. Good play by him to clear it out of harm's way. Ten seconds left in the power play. So far so good for the Cubs as Edie gets it back to the point now. Right. Over to the side wall. Now it goes cross crease. Bisons have two seconds left. The Cubs are going to kill it off. Mayer. Is he going to spring funk? We'll see. Mayor up towards center, off the end wall, but it's picked off in there. Good play by number 20, Babbitt, to steal it to the front of the net. And the Bisons can't get the puck. Sight slips it up towards Funk. Funk couldn't handle the pass. 154 to go in the second period. As the puck comes up towards center now, Babbitt's got it. He's in on the, the uh, over the line, but Funk made a good play. Bouncing shot in there. Babbitt got a shot. And Schaefer makes the save. 41, 42 shots to 13 is... The Bisons increase that lead. They lead 5-1, 144 left. Mark, well, Cubs had a good penalty kill there. Yeah, you know. Very good. They didn't. They limited Okotoks' chances to one or two shots on net, and that's what you need from your penalty kill, and who knows, maybe that'll give them momentum to get one quick one before the uh, period's over. Well, we'll see what happens. Bucks in the corner now. Jeremy Smith's got it. Jeremy Smith still got it. He comes to the faceoff circle. Rips a shot. Shea for the save. Blocks it to the corner there. Loomer goes in after behind the net. Loomer battling with Smith in there. And Tanner Mir bodies him off the puck. Florkowski has it pinned up against the boards. 124 to go in the second period. Tanner Mir. Now they're all in there. It's like a dog pile for the puck. Florkowski will come out with it. Kyle Florkowski takes a hit. Gets it up to Marshall. Marshall chips it by the defenseman. Gallopo's going to get it. Gallopo. Marshall looked offside. But Gallopo keeps going with it. Puck's still in deep. Gallopo pushes his man. Almost took, could have taken the puck. Marshall doing a good job digging in there. Flakowski takes a deep. Marshall, can he find Cody Flakowski? No, but he comes off the end wall. Still doing some good work. Marshall off the end wall now. Puts it down deep to Cody Flakowski. Shoots off of Hughes' pads. He bangs away at it. And, few, and Hughes has got it. Then he goes in there and gives a few face washes. And Cody Flakowski doing everything he can to get the Cubs back in this one. Oh, now he takes a punch from Jeremy Smith. And maybe, maybe Kyle's going to go in there. Maybe Jeremy Smith gets a penalty here. We'll see. Oh, Jeremy Smith's after Flakowski. He drops his gloves. Jeremy Smith going in there. Flakowski's not dropping his gloves. Smith wants a piece of him. There goes Smith again. He's after Flakowski again. Cody Flakowski doing his best. Derek Dorsett to kind of suck Jeremy Smith in there a little bit. But we'll see. No, Jeremy was really upset. Now Cody's going to go to the box too. So we'll see what comes of this. This is all coming with the Bisons leaving, leading 5-1 to one with 56.8 seconds left in the second period. Well, we'll see what happens here, what transpires on the penalties here. Still 56.8 seconds left in the second. And I'll sort this one out. Farkowski, that's Cody going to the dressing room. Jeremy Smith's going to head off. Well, they're going to head off because there's only... Less than a minute left. Well, another game said Red Deers and Black Folds. The Wranglers are leading three games to nothing. We don't have a score there. We do know the left for Churkins. We're leading the Kootenai Ice at last report, 2-1. to one. And That's after two periods. In the was the final score tonight. The Brandon Wheat Kings defeated the Prince Albert Raiders 4-1. to one. So the PA Raiders falling on some hard times still. And you know what? The Swift Current Broncos and the Madison Tigers still a chance to catch them. So we'll see what happens there. That makes things more interesting. And now you, you get the Hurricanes and the Regina Pats, the Weak Kings, 
All those teams playing spoilers. We'll see what plays out on that on the weekend. Cubs trying to play spoilers here. Come back in this one. Prolong the series. Puck goes down the ice. It'll be a two-minute power play. Really needing to make some A. Can they get a goal here before the end of the period? We'll find out. Puck comes up on the left wing side. Janelle puts a nice pass to Fury. He's in the left wing side. And how it blows the tire back pass, and he didn't see Loomer there, and he picks it off, shoots it down the ice. Oh, just forgot to shoulder check on that one, and there's Dylan Loomer like a policeman right in the vision there, and it's shot down the ice. 25 seconds left. Puck comes up on the left wing side. Fury, let it go there, and how it'll get it, and he'll fire it down the ice. A night on it, picked up by the Bisons. They got almost a two on one here. Brown, he lost in front of the net, made a good play to get in front of it, and the puck just sat there nicely for Eisenbrenner. One last rush, nine seconds left. Janelle tips it in, it goes into behind the net. Hughes, he'll play it again. Gave it away to Brown. Puck shot towards the front of the net. Two seconds left. Mickelson's going to take the long shot and shoots it wide. That'll do it for the second period. The Bisons take a healthy 5 1 lead into the intermission. The shot's on goal in the second. Bison 17. They have 43 for two pair total. Cubs with six for 14 and you can definitely see the Bisons have 30 more shots on net and boy they're just throwing everything at Schaefer right now. 38 saves for that man so far. Cubs down by four. Gagnon made it 5-1. They're late in the second period. So we'll see what happens here in the third period in short order. Will the Cubs really need to get something going Mark if they're going to come back and prolong this series? Yeah you know they got to a minute left in this power play going into the third period. They, that's huge. Oh, yeah, that's a big power play. They need to do something, but just more importantly, you just got to get more than 14 shots on net here. You just got to keep peppering you using net, and you, you do that, you know eventually one of them's going to find the back of the net. Yeah, Mark, like we said, we mentioned the Bisons have 30 more shots on that. Cole Schaefer's been a real busy man, and uh, you know he stood tall in there making some great saves. But we'll see what happens in short order. Cubs down by four. 5-1 after 40 minutes of play. And you know what, Mark? Hopefully, you know, if they can get some goals. Otherwise, this will be the last 20 minutes in some careers of some fine young gentlemen. Yeah, for sure. You know, you know, they're in the dressing room realizing that, and you know they're gonna give it their all in this Absolutely. third period and, and you know you're probably going to see a different Cubs team here. Yep, throw everything you can now, right Mark? Exactly, you know you're going to get one that comes out with hopefully confidence and they just boom, 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 just hit the back yep. of the net for them. Yeah, and you know what, you may as well throw the puck on now, get as many shots as you can, Test, uh, keep testing Hughes, you threw it on the net there, Gagnon popped in a rebound to make it 5-1 Got the Cubs on the board, and it seemed like it said woke up the team there. Gallopo had a big hit at center ice on Jordan Eady. That was huge. And then, um, you know, the penalty kill was, was, was another huge point of the hockey game, but now they got a minute and four power play. It's going to be huge to score right away in the, fir in the third period to get themselves back within three. We'll see if that happens. Bisons have been really stingy on the penalty kill. 5-1 Bisons after 40. You're listening to Cam Zani and Mark Keller. Via medicine at cubs.com and heritagejunior.com. We'll be back for third period. Stay tuned. If the internet's up, so are we.
All right. I believe Mark Keller has got us back online. Yes, he does. Mark Keller, Cam Zondi. Well, Mark, will it be our last period of hockey, or are we going to continue on? I hope we get any on. Well, you know, it's been a great, 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 been a great year calling games, and I, I'm hoping there's another game for us. Absolutely. Me too. But, uh, well, well, that's in the Cubs' hands tonight, right, end Mark? The, end of the game, we got a little bit of an announcement here, so. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, I'll let you take that home. I think I know what it's going to be, some special guests, but we'll we'll talk to them later. As the Bisons are on the ice, leading 5-1, to one, a healthy lead right now. Well, I got, hopefully, got special guests coming up, but I also got another announcement. All right. We'll see what that is. I'm kind of scared now. Should I be scared? Yeah, you should, because... No, I know, and it's nothing bad, so... Okay, okay. Well, so long as it's nothing bad, did I do anything wrong? No, no, it's not no, about no. me? No, 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 no. Good. All right, well, if it's not about me, right, and it's not bad, then I'm not going to worry. Just just a little rattled right now. Okay. Got a, got a $250 ticket in Calgary yesterday. You did? Oh, for, for what? Apparently it's illegal to not have a ticket riding the C-Train. Well, yeah, didn't we get left on 9th and 9th one year? That's another story to be told at another time. I, we're almost turning this into a talk show. Just a reminder that you're watching Medicine Hat Cups Hockey via, beef feeder, uh, via the Beef Feeder. And uh, it's at medicinehatcups.com as well as the Heritage Junior League site, heritagejunior.com. Cam's on to here. Mark Keller kind of pulling, you know, David Letterman, you know, Bob Cole and Harry Neal sort of we're kind of just up here. You know, you should just invite, well, Dave Dawson and Tim up here and just have a debate for the third period here. No, just kidding. We got some hockey to watch. Cubs trying to call their way back in this one. Got a power play, Mark, for a minute and four. You got to make this one work. You, you just have to, I think. Yeah, you know, you got a power play going this third for a minute and you, you want to get on the board early and you do that, you're only down by three. You're going to have that momentum here. Yep, they don't want to let this season end. We'll see what happens. As the Cubs have the puck, now it's Funk as they're on the power play here for about a minute to start this first uh, third period. I think uh, Bryce Honest just asked uh, Kyle Funk if he wanted to drop him at center ice there. Oh, I have never seen Kyle Funk in a fight. I don't know if I want to. I think they need him on the ice, but you know what? Uh, you never know in this type of game and in the Junior B League. Anything can happen. Anything. Fan brawls, Dave Dawson shows up, everything. Anything can happen. As the Bisons get the puck and shoot it down the ice, Logan Mayer turns off the front of the net there to Kyle Funk. He's in on the left wing side. Funk. And it'll be the biggest comeback this year. We've seen them come back against Banff. We've seen them come back against Strathmore. They scored five third period goals. This one would probably top it. It would be the icing on the cake. It would be the bananas on the cereal. It would be the tomatoes on my pizza. Let's just say it's big. As the Cubs block, we're blocked there and it's shot down the ice. Schaefer will have to play it. No cigars there, Mark. None on that power play. Unfortunately, the fire was put out early. Yeah, you know, Logan Mary took a... Oh, look at this, Mark. Here comes Funk towards the front of the net. Sorry to cut you off. Yeah, Such you know, a good play. Logan Mary took a slap shot guard on that, but there's a reason why Chase Fallis is captain for Okotoks. He just went down to sell his body and blocked it. I agree with you, and there's a reason why we're meant to call this game together. Because we had nothing else to do. And we were told to. No, I'm just kidding. I love you too. As the puck is dumped in, 5-1 the score, 18-20 to go in the third period. It is Ben Fury. Makes the move. Makes another move in his own end. Now he goes uh, for the pass to Tanner. Marin Mer behind the net. Now goes up to Gagnon. Gagnon can't get it by Mickelson. Mickelson, the loss at Gagnon, does get it by him. Ben Fury goes for escape, but it's too far. And it'll be down the ice. 18-03 with the most exciting play in hockey, the icing call. 43-14, the shots. Okotoks, and they lead 5-1. Mark, are we going out with a bang? The Cubs are going to score five. You never know. You know, they, they've done it before, and it's possible to do it again. 
Absolutely. We've seen him score five. Barry Adams, I thought he was going to just not have a heart attack, but he was going to laugh himself to death when they scored that fifth goal. I think I made him laugh so hard. I couldn't believe it either. Neither could he. He was speechless. And when is Barry Adams speechless? That's pretty, pretty hard time to find him speechless. Puck is cleared in there. Schaefer will leave it in there for Derek Janelle. Like, love that guy. Gives the best interviews. What a nice young man Derek Janelle is. Pleasure to work with and interview over the last couple seasons. Up towards center ice now. Eisenbrenner loses it. Ben Fury. He's coming in on the right wing side. Puts the pass over for Kyle Frakowski. It was deflected by him. And now Eisenbrenner up towards center. He's in over the line. Eisenbrenner drop pass. In there to Baba. Shot towards the front of the net. It bounces through there. John's almost had that one go in. John's in behind the net now. John's lost it in there. Corey Brown did a good play. Now Schaefer picks up his stick puck centered right out in front. It bounces around there. Schaefer's got it in the old glove. And he'll hold on. All right. 17-03. Still lots of time, Mark. If this was floor hockey, we'd be smiling. Yeah, you know, you have, usually when you play floor hockey, you have Tim Sarchuk, and then we just usually He's a sieve. Up. Yeah, he's a sieve. All right, here comes Kyle Frakowski. Got a step on Tracy. Puts the pass off of Tracy and comes back out. Logan Mayer now, he'll get it. He'll dump it in. Logan Mayer's got to have the best facial hair in the Heritage Junior Hockey League. Do, would you agree with that, Mark? That beard is awesome. I think it, Dave Dawson might be taking a picture of it. No, he's it not. Is, it is pretty impressive. That's that that is sure. awesome. He looks like Mike Commodore of the, I believe, the Carolina Hurricanes in that playoff run against the Oilers. That was unbelievable. That playoff run and Logan Mayer's beard. Unbelievable. I love that guy. Don't you? Hey, you know, he's just a tremendous... Great kid. He's a great guy. Tremendous guy on and off the ice. Had a How long would it take him to grow that? Do we know? We're going to have to ask him that. Maybe on our post-game show, hint, hint, our special guests. All right, back to the action. 16.30 to go here in the second or third period. Cubs down by four, but they're trying to battle back. Logan Mary. He goes up to Matt Seitz on the right wing side. Boy, Seitz had a great second half and really progressed in his hockey this season. Bucks in deep now. Johnson will flip it around the boards. The product of Davidson, Saskatchewan. Can't get it out of there. Dylan Loomer will keep it in. Wow. Pointed that out. Hometown of Ristino. Red Deer Rebel. Well, there we go. We've made a connection. I don't know if we can keep it going, but Dave Dawson pointed that out. Interesting. Good block in there by Brody. Puck down deep. Tipped wide. And now off the wall comes Zach Baba. Gets it towards the blue line. Bison's trying to just keep the puck in the medicine out in. 15.50 to go. Logan Mayer turns off a check. He'll go around the boards. Hago chips it up towards center ice. Bison's will take it back over. Tracy up on the left side. He Put the pass to Chase Fallis, the captain. Fallis unable to get in there. Matt Seitz made a good play. Now it's uh, Hagel. He'll get it up towards center where it's picked up by Mickelson. He comes in on the right wing side. Mickelson heading for the net. Had that beautiful pass on that fifth goal. Drop pass to Fallis. Backhand shot. Mickelson gets it off the end of the post there, but there was nowhere near. It was right off that outskirts of it. Back to the point. Now Howard. He goes in deep for Fair. Back to Howard. To Fair. Comes off the face-off circle. Fair now. Nobody to pass to. Logan Mayer shut that lane down. Good play there. Back to Howard now on the point. Howard. He'll shoot it through traffic. Good save in there by Schaefer. And that's one thing all series we've said. The Bison's able to get traffic and shoot it through traffic on to Schaefer. It's been a good play for them. Durant takes his man hard against the boards. Good check in there on Howard. Funk now steals the puck. He's heading for the net. Here's Funk right out in front. Comes in behind the net as he went to the backhand. And he couldn't get it to go there. Funk ever so slithery in there looking for something to happen. Puck goes deep into the Venice in 14-44. Austin Gallup will back. It'll be an icing call. Mark, what do you think? Tell me anything on your mind right now. The first thing that comes to the top of your head. Oh, well, not much, but... Uh, the one thing with the Cubs in this series, they need their big guns to step up and you got to give credit to Hokotoks. They've done a good job at shutting down Kyle Funk, Denver Dean and so on. Right out in front backhand shot. Oh and Ganyan just put that one over the net. Good chance there. Tanner Mayer now keeps it along the wall to Ben Fury. Fury now back to Tanner Mayer. He's going to get the shot to top tip. Big rebound and it's cleared out of the Bisons. will shoot it down the ice and they're going to take no chances here. 14-18 to go. As the Cubs had a good scoring chance, a couple of good scoring chances in there. Well, 15 degrees outside today, a really nice day. Good traveling weather for the Bisons to come down. 
some snow in the forecast in the next few days. But today was beautiful. As we see a young fellow here who's won a Cubs jersey. Hopefully he won that. He didn't just take it. It's a Ben Fury. Smells it to see if it's game worn. <laughs> That's kind of interesting play there. And smelling the jersey. All right. Wants to make sure it's authentic. Puck comes up on the right side. Bison's holding it in there. Back now. Here's Edie stepping into it. Good hit in there from Austin Gallup. Puck comes right out front. Edie gets it again. Boy, he's always in the right spot. As uh, the puck went to Dylan, he almost shot it wide. Edie gets it again to Phil Dylan. He's heading for the net to Edie. Right out in front. Gannon made a good play to get a stick on that. Boy, the Bison's just really knowing where to go in the scoring areas. As the Cubs get the puck back up toward the center ice, Ben Fury back. He gets fed off the pass there. Now he gets it back. Puts it right out in front. Here's the throw. Shoots right in the glove of Hughes. Good play there. Marshall had a chance. And you can tell, Mark, the Okotoks Bisons, a very veteran-based team in the Keystone Cup last year, lost it. Build this team, they said, for the Keystone. Is it not the Keystone Cup anymore? Oh, okay. So what do they... Oh, Russ Barnes final. Okay, well, same thing. As, But they're built for this year. That's the main thing, Mark. Three years in a row they've been together, and they're built for this year. And you can tell the Cubs back in the playoffs for the first time in two years. You can tell the difference. Yeah, you know, you you can tell an experienced team from a rookie team that's missed playoffs since 2010, I believe. And, and it's shown you have guys that have played together for three years in Oak Tokes and you got a couple guys in here for some two, three years or some been playing hockey all their lives together and what can you say? You just can't take anything away from the Cubs season this year. Absolutely. As Brown lets his man go, they score! Eisenbrenner making it 6-1. to one. Corey Brown kind of got a little crossed up in there. Eisenbrenner will bury that one on Schaefer again. No chance for him and that puts a damper on things. It's six to one here. Six to one. Twelve thirty-seven to go. Forty-eight sixteen are the shots. And the third period. Logan Mayer has a talk with his goaltender, and I'm sure he's telling him, you know what, Cole? You've been a rock for us all year, and not your fault on that. Definitely not, as he's come in tonight with a 918 save percentage. So, you know, when you have that and your goals against is 378, so you've given up a little bit of goals, but when you stop being 92% of your shots, man, that's got to be a great stat. Eddie Tracy turns off the pass. It'll be on the PA. Ty Fair setting up Eisenbrenner. He gets the goal. For Eisenbrenner, that's his second in the playoffs. So Brody Eisinger puts the Bisons up by five again. Mickelson will put it back in deep. Logan Mayer, he'll be back in there. He'll chip it off the wall to Ian Johnson. Cubs defense has been really busy in there. Own end tonight. Bison's really going to the attack. Baba now, he'll get the puck up at center ice, and the Bison's will dump it in. Here they come again. It's in deep there now along the end wall. The Cubs trying to get it out of their sights. will chip it back up towards center. And it's played back in the medicine at end. Hagel's back in his own end. Hagel will go back in behind his own end. 11.49 to go in the third period. Bison's up 6-1 to one as the Cubs come up towards center. It's picked off there by Mickelson. He's had such a smooth skating. As the puck was shot, it's blocked in there. Loomer puts it in behind the net. Back, reverse pass to Loomer. He couldn't handle it. Durant was all over him. Durant will chip it up towards center. Funk's got ahead of speed now. Mickelson was back to get it, though. And the Bison's Dylan Loomer will just rip it back in. Johnson goes back. Assistant captain. Comes up towards center. His pass couldn't get Kyle Funk. And now it'll be played between the blue lines and... Here come the Bisons again. Dylan Loomer. Drop pass to Fallis. Fallis to the front of the net. It bounces in there. They've got it there. Johnson a little bit upset with Loomer in front of the net. And Mark 6-1 uh, now. And Cubs, uh, that six one hurt. That one really hurt. He always did the other ones, but that one really hurts now. Yeah, you know, and you can just tell after that six goal, the sales are off. And personally, it doesn't even look like they want to play anymore here. Yeah, it's kind of been all Bisons in their own end as Funk dumps the puck up towards center. We hopefully they can find a spark here and maybe you never know. You still got half a period left. You get a couple goals and you know what? You never know. But the Bisons really 
taking it to him. The Cubs kind of, like Mark said, was a little bit sitting back. Now Gallup looks for the big hit in there. He stepped into Mickelson. Mickelson shoves Dean. We wondered maybe if a little bit of physicality will get into this now. And Cubs might be a little frustrated as Funk comes up towards center. Mickelson reverses it. He'll put it over for Howitt. Howitt up on the right wing side. He'll play it ahead now. It's Gannon low back. Gannon's made some great strides his rookie year this year. 37 points. Great season for him. He's going to be a big addition next year. With him and Kyle Funk come back. they got some good offensive weapons there. Howitt keeps it along the line. Comes up towards Funk. Now he's not going to quit. He's up towards center. Funk giving it his all every time out there. Tries to get around the defense but almost did. Turned uh, Tyson Arnold's onto his backhand but just couldn't get around him. 6-1 the score. We're at each the midway point of the third period. The Bisons in control. And they lead in the shots 49-17. to Well, Mark, looking at the stats here and Mark saying the Cubs have had three shots this period. We look at Cole Schaefer now, and Cole has faced uh, 436 shots in four games. Wow. Is that? No, that's an eight game, sorry. Nine games. Nine games, 436 shots, so he's done his part. Funk's had a great playoffs, 12 points in eight games, as has Denver Dean, six goals, and Marshall with seven points. Couple overtime winners in that wonderful series with Cole. What a series that was. We went three overtimes as the Bisons come back three on one. Here they come. It's Edie leading the rush. Edie goes in deep. Good play in there by the Cubs to get back. That was uh, both Janelle brothers getting back. Fury now got a step. Fury towards the front of the net. There's going to be a penalty. Fury now puts it to Marshall. Marshall right out in front. Bang away at it. Hughes has got it in his pads and Marshall can't get it to go. That'll be a Power play coming up here, Boston Pizza power play. Speaking of Boston Pizza, I am hungry. Holy. Yeah, Tim Sarchuk on the camera. He's licking his lips. Cole Phillips, he's crossed his arms back here, protecting us. You never know what can happen here. Mark Keller, he's going over the stats. And Dave Kowalchuk's at home with the head cold. So we'll see how that head cold feels tomorrow. Him and Michaela. And, uh, yeah, if we had another microphone, we'd go down to Brandon McGraw in the penalty box, but that's on, we're unable to do that. Farkowski now battling in behind the net now. Can't get it. Cubs can't keep it in. It'll be dumped down the ice. Nine minutes exactly to go here in the third period of game four. The Bisons in complete control. Cubs are on the power play. Trying to make hay, maybe get themselves back into this again. Janelle made a good play, but Diddy Tracy, very steady along that blue line. The veteran will get the puck and fire at the length of the ice. The Cubs just can't get anything going on this power play. As they as they come up, yeah, as they come up towards center. Yep, I believe it was Black Folds as Forkowski winds, fires, didn't miss by much. Oh my goodness. Get out the radar gun on that. As the puck comes down the left wing side, it's Loomer. He couldn't get. Or Phil Dillon couldn't get past Janelle. Janelle made another good play in there. Boys, he's been steady along the blue line. Yeah, Dave Kowalchuk experimented with that. It worked really well last year. And he stayed there. Really made a name for himself. Blocking shots. Phil Dillon now. Out to walk right. Oh, makes a great move in there around Johnson. Boy, he's done that twice to Johnson. Poor Johnny's had his fill of Phil Dillon. Wow. Such good hands with Phil Dillon. As soon as you look down at the puck, he just beats you. Here comes Kyle Farkowski. He set himself a good game, even though he's been unable to get on the score sheet. He's really worked hard out there with Marshall and his brother Cody. It's got to be a treat playing with his brother. Well, Shelly Mayer, we hope you're enjoying the telecast out there. We know you couldn't be with us tonight. I've said it about three or four times. Calvin Heller was over here, and he said, Cam, make sure you say hi to Shelly. We know she's in Calgary right now, and we want her to get well and get back here. And all the boys say hi. They... Love what she does for the team, love her around the team, and I love what she's done with the player profiles and treated me with respect and class, so thanks so much, Shelly. I've really appreciated working with you this year, and Randy, Fury as well. So hopefully you're enjoying this telecast of the Cubs and the Bisons. It's been a close series, though. Unfortunately, the games are 3-0 Bisons. The Bisons have been just able to find that extra gear and score when they need to, like Sunday night, getting that third goal. They 
been able to come back from a 3-0 deficit. Cubs have, you know, had the lead in some of these games, and Bison's just find that extra gear and the way to score, and that's what a veteran team will do. As the puck comes to the blue line now, Bison's keep it in. Left wing side, Howitt with 6.37, right out in front. Arnholtz couldn't get it to go, puts it right out in front again. And it's chipped back up to center by Hagel. It gets a ovation from the stand fans there as Howitt will wind it up down the right wing side. Here's Howitt, unchallenged. Howitt goes to the corner now. He's bodied in the corner by Denver Dean now. Johns couldn't handle the pass. Funk's back in his own end in the floor. The back checking roll. Here's Funk now speeding out of his own end. Funk makes a good play to Duran. The old line's back together. Funk with Duran. Cross crease pass. Tried to hit Dean. Funk around the net. He's trying to make something happen in there. He doesn't want to let this go just yet. Here's Duran. Shoots it over top of the stands. And there's a good play by Kyle Funk. You know, Mark, we know that guy's a gamer. Yeah, you know, he, he brings it each and every game. And he's really competitive. He wants to win each game. And... What can you say? He had a good burst of speed there, and he almost created a scoring, well, he did create a scoring chance. Absolutely. Now Gallopo goes over to Tanner Mayer on that right wing side. He's off the wall and chips it back in. 5.50 to go here in the third period. Bisons well in control here, up by five. Healthy 6-1 lead as Denver Dean's in there. Cubs trying to make some nap here, get themselves on the score sheet again as it's Baba racing down the right wing side. He's met there by Tanner Mayer. Drops it off there. Though gets it back. Now throws it in behind the net. Works with Boyd. Now the fourth line for the Bisons out there. Boyd now. He's able to walk right out front. Here's Boyd. And now he takes a good wicked cross check in there from Denver Dean. That's going to get called. And now Tanner Mayer kind of takes exception there to one of the Bisons in front of the net. That was number 11 in the Bisons, Christopher Price. And uh, Tanner trying to clear the front of the net there. But... Things getting a little chippy, but Denver Dean definitely got a, I would say, a good cross check there and never want to see that. Just a little upset, you know, with the way things are going and really had a good playoffs, though. Can't uh, knock this guy's game at all. He continued to provide consistent scoring for the Cubs. A late pickup, nine points in eight games coming into tonight, six of them goals. And wow, how many goals did he score in that series against Coldwell? He's been a valuable asset and a great pickup for this team definite valuable asset as the puck comes back to the point of the bisons will work the power play once more they put it on the right wing side comes across now as the pass for tracy couldn't handle it tracy now the one-timer goes into the stands it was fired in there by onish 135 to go in the power play and uh As we continue along here, only 4.57 to go in the third period. No score in yet from Red Deer and Black Fultz. We'll see what happens in that series. Red Deer with an uphill battle there. They're down by three. Kind of figured that series might go seven. Some were predicting Red Deer to even win that series. But so far it hasn't fallen for the Red Deer Vipers who really had to use overtime in their last series. Played seven game series against Airdrie. That was something. Else, a couple games going to double overtime there. I think even the final game was um, won in overtime. Cubs had to go to overtime in three games. Went to triple overtime one game to, to beat the Coldale Copperheads. As the Bisons have a minute left in their power play, Gagnon is chasing down Eddie Tracy. Winds out of his own end. Gagnon, now he's got a head of speed. He's all over Tracy, but Tracy keeps going with it. Boy, showing some poise along the end wall. Tracy, backdoor pass. It's Loomer back to the point. Now the Bisons will move it around. Boy, did they move the puck so nicely. Schaefer makes that save and into the stands. And there you go, I believe. There it is, the 50th shot on Cole Schaefer here tonight. And boy, that, that man has seen a lot of rubber this season and in the playoffs. So, we'll see what happens here. Only 41 seconds left, Alice. He wins the draw here. Bisons, can they hold it in? Yes, Gripe will hold it in the left wing side. Right now going down low to Fallis, to Jeremy Smith. He puts the back door past to Fallis. Logan Mayer pins him up against the wall. Can't get to it now, and it's Fallis who gets it back to Jeremy Smith. He walks into the face of the circle. Jeremy Smith in, shoots, didn't miss by much. He was going for that top right-hand corner now. Puck on the left-wing side. Ben Fury now leaves it for Funk. Funk will go back behind his own net. He'll flip it up the middle 
And out of there, Ben Freeman might have a chance to catch up to it. It goes deep. Mark Keller's got a, an update here for BP's out-of-town scoreboard. It's the uh, Red Deer Vipers leading the Black Falls Wranglers 2-0 after 2. All right, so there you go. The Vipers might not be done yet. Well, looking for a big win. 2-0 Vipers. Thanks, Mark. He'll get some WHL out-of-town scores here in just a moment. Cubs, Funk breaking in now. He's got a step on Greg. Funk goes in, takes the goalie out. And uh, Hughes goes down. Funk gets a shot in there, and I don't think he meant to do that. He was kind of being wa watched in there, but you hear Cody's mom yelling out for a penalty shot. I don't know. Grape was right with him, so maybe a hook, but really not too much. Funk in there, and Grape pushing and shoving after the whistle. Now, though, cooler heads will prevail. Mark Keller will go back to the sports desk, and Mark Keller with the Boston Pete's update. Mark? Well, there's only two games in WHL tonight. I bet you I can guess one of them. Brandon won. Yeah, they won 4 1 over PA, and Lethbridge beat Kootenay 4 2. Lethbridge beat Kootenay? Oh my goodness, the Lethbridge Hurricanes beat the Kootenay Ice tonight 4 2. The ice is melting in Kootenay, I can't believe it. The spring is on, the ice is melting. Can you believe that? Yeah, but it still doesn't matter, seeing as Kootenay beat Lethbridge last night and yep. eliminated Lethbridge. Yeah, so the Hurricanes pulling out all the stops now to finish ninth in the hunt for the playoff spot. That'll put them on the outside looking in. Boy, they just had a dismal last 20 games. There's a cross check in there. Cubs are going to get called again. Here's a two-on-one. It's Jordan Eady. He's got Phil Dillon with him. Eady goes in, shoots, shape for the save. Phil Dillon puts it off the end boards. Howard will keep it in on the right wing side. Penley coming up to the Cubs. Delayed penalty call. And now Gallopo will touch it. 2.39 to go in the third period. 6-1 the score. Bison's leading. As we just mentioned, the Hurricanes defeated the Kootenai Ice tonight 4-2. So Ice kind of stymied there, and that means the Tigers are going to have their work cut out for them against the Lethbridge Hurricanes this weekend. Brandon Wheat Kings defeat the PA Raiders, so it's not all done for the Raiders yet. They still could finish as low as seventh. What a series that would be if they took on the Saskatoon Blades. I know someone would get beat up in that series. That's two teams that just hate each other. Puck shipped down the ice, 2.30 to go in this game. Hughes will leave it in there. They're on the power play again, Mark. How many power plays is that tonight, you know? Mark's going to count that up here. He's too many on his... Can you count fingers? Ten? Eight? Okotoks is one for four on the power play right now, and the Cubs are 0 for six tonight. 0 for six, okay. With, with three with three five-on-three power plays. Three five-on-three power plays. I believe Dave Dawson is... Heading out, he's going to go present the trophy here. That's what he says, but I don't know what he means. Kyle Forkowski is going to get called here, I think. With two minutes and one second left. 6-1 and almost safe to say. And we don't want to say it, but the Okotoks Bisons are going to win the South here. They're going to win the South here, and it looks like it's going to be in four games. And you know, the Bisons... Harvard meets them in the final, beat Black Folds. You know, Red Deer's leading 2 to nothing, trying to come back in that series, down three games. But whoever meets the Bisons is going to have their hands full. This team is stacked, like we said, three lines of scoring and a checking line that can provide energy. Defensemen that pinch in, that can score, and some good goaltenders. Now the shot, and the save in there, and it'll go off the end wall. Bisons work the five on three. Backdoor pass, Shea for the save. And uh, old rebound. Good save by Schaefer to come over there. 54-19 of the shots now. Mark, I'm going to have you, uh, we can give you another new thing tonight. You're, do the three stars. I know you're, what you're going to do for three stars, or maybe four. I won't give that hint away what I did. But uh, I want you to pick the MVP of the Cubs of the playoffs. I'm going to let you do that. But you don't have to do it now. You think about it. Could be a few guys. But I'm going to let you pick the MVP of the playoffs for the Cubs. I'm going to give you that. I'll sit here and think about it, but it's tough to pick. There's been a lot, a lot of guys, a lot of guys up. going as you can go with Funk, Logan Mayer, what on playoffs defense, it's been. Derek Janelle, Cole Schaefer, Denver Dean, just about anyone on that Cubs team. Absolutely, shot down the ice. It's been a great run, Mark Keller. A minute 25 to go here. Bison's up by five. They're going to move on, but they're not done yet. They're on the power play. Eddie Tracy's in. They're going to have the power play for another, well, for the rest of this hockey game. Won't be five on three, it'll be five on four now. But still for another 27 seconds. Tracy now sets it up in the Medicine Hat end. Schaefer's going to have some more rubber here to face. End of the final minute. Scores! Backdoor pass. Fair will finish it off. 
Seven to one, and that was almost like we were in a library. Nobody even heard that backdoor pass, and uh, Ty Fair making it seven to one here. That just puts some more icing on the cake here for the Bisons. They do the right thing, not celebrate, and just go over to the bench. The Bisons will win the South here. Red Deer Vipers leading two to nothing in Black Falls tonight. So that series not done yet. See if the Vipers can hold on. That was after two periods of play. See if that will what'll prevail there. Bisons with another power play goal here. They're still in the power play. Brad Cobb and Blaine Farmerata sent out four defensemen and Ian Johnson, Derek Janelle, Logan Mayer, and Tanner Mayer. That's pretty cool. Pretty soon maybe they'll put Corey Brown out there as the puck is shot in, blocked in there. Comes to Janelle and he flips it out of the stands. And Brown will catch that. Well, we'll see what happens there. Tanner Mayer's going to come off. And there you go, Mark. They're going to put all four overages on. We caught it. All four overages are on the ice. Give them a standing ovation because those guys have earned it. Janelle blocking shots. Brown didn't ask any questions. Just moved to defense. Logan mayer has been an awesome captain. And Ian Johnson's given you four years of service. Can you ask any more to your 20-year-olds? 21-year-olds? Not, not at all. You know, they've all contributed big time for this team. And... Boy, no if they could score a goal, wouldn't that be something? Okay, Logan no Mayer up to Brown. No better way than putting them out. Brown comes in. He'll shoot it. Hughes will make the save. And no rebound. 17.4 seconds. Sorry, Mark, to cut you off. Show there you go. You see a, cla uh, you see a class act by the coaching staff to send your four overages out there for their final shift of junior hockey. Absolutely. Mark kind of brings a tear to my eye. I'm not kidding. It's kind of nice to see that out there. And there you go, Shelly. You can be proud. Logan's on the ice. Boy, he meant some great service to this team. All four of those guys would play their hearts out. Anytime, anywhere, block shots. They weren't afraid. Great four guys to be around to. Bisons take the shot. Schaefer makes the save, and that'll do it. The season is over for the Cubs. The careers of four great junior hockey players are over. Ian Johnson, congratulations. Ian Johnson, number 19. Then it's not Cubs from Davidson, Saskatchewan. Four years of service. Number 11, Captain Logan Mayer. Congratulations to him. He had a heck of a run. Also, Derek Janelle, number 26. And also, Corey Brown, number 23. You had a heck of a career here, guys. Thank you for your service. Thank you for giving us highlights for you to call. It was awesome. The Bisons win the game 6-1 to win the series in four and a sweep, four to nothing. And now there's nothing left but the handshakes, Mark. It's tough seeing those four guys leave and... Can you tell them the special surprise that you're working on? Yeah, well, I'll say it in a bit here, but if you're the Cubs, there's nothing you can be uh, holding your head. Just keep your head high. You had a great season. You made it to the South Division Finals, but you know if you're the Cubs, they, they wanted to win it, but what can you say? They they had it, like you could probably agree with me, they had a tremendous year this year. Absolutely, coming That's back. what you want to see, you know. I come back here after two years of missing the playoffs. They come in here. They have a heck of a series with the cold. Well, they finished, first of all, they finished tied for second. 23 wins. A big, big season. Blaine Fomeratis and, and Brad Cobb did a great job bringing them back. And then uh, they get the Coldwell Copperheads in the first round. That series goes five games. Three of them are won in overtime. Reese Durant, Josh Marshall, I believe, scored two goals. Did he not in overtime? And, uh, you know, there you go, Mark. No, it was Kyle Funk, sorry. Kyle Funk, Marshall, and uh, Reese Durant. 16, 17, and 18, was it not? Yeah, and <laughs> who knows, even maybe from that Coldale series, from going to overtime, three games there, they might have been tired, but just just been a good season. You can't take anything from uh, Okotoks. There's a reason why they went 33-2-2-1 on the year. Yes. It's a tremendous hockey team to watch. Yep, and they ran into, a, like you said, a veteran Bisons team. And you know what, Mark? Game one, they had a 3 nothing lead. You know, Bisons found a way to come back. Cubs uh, were in the second game. They're in the third game. This is the only game of the series, really, that they weren't in. Other than that, they, they've they been in every game. They And especially on the road, they played their best hockey up in Okotoks. Yeah, who knows? Maybe, maybe that first game when they're up 3 nothing was the uh, turning point of this series. You, you hang on to that game. you got a different series here, but... Not to take any Cubs, they 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 stuck there in every game, sorry, and that's what you want to see, especially with them going against the top team in the league. There you go, they get the ceremonial stick wave to everybody, and they'll skate off the ice here one last time. 
can see Ian Johnson very emotional over on the right hand side. He skating off the ice here. Nobody likes to end the season on a sour note, but really those guys can hang their heads high. Wow, what a season they had. Like we said, getting into the South Final for the first time in a few years here, Mark, but four years, I believe, and playing, uh, you know, taking the Bisons, you know, pretty good games here. And then that huge battle with Colda, what a series that was, and you know what, nobody can hang their heads here. What a what a great year it's been to call games too, Mark. Oh, yeah, you know, it's been a tremendous job calling games beside you, and like I was saying earlier, if you're the Cubs, just got to keep your head high. It was a, it was a great year for them, and... Nothing to be ashamed of. You went and you played hard. You made it to the South Division Final. and You played a good team. A oh, really yeah. good team. The best team. A, a, an unreal team in Okotos they played. And it, it was tough. You know, they're they're the underdogs coming into this, this series. And they're in every game. And because they're in every game, you just got to keep your heads high. Absolutely. The Bisons win 7-1 to here tonight. They win the series four games to nothing. They outshoot. The Cubs 56 to 20. Cole Schaefer making 49 saves tonight. And uh, the Bisons will go on. Who knows who they're going to face? The Red Deer Vipers are leading 2 to nothing after two periods. So we'll see what happens there in that series. Um, you know, Red Deer's got a long uphill battle. But, uh, yeah, Bisons playing uh, Black Folds last year. So, um, you know what? Could be a repeat again of two teams. You know what, two really good teams. Even if the Vipers get in, that's a good series, too. Yeah, you know, whatever, whatever team wins out of Red Deer and Black Falls, you know, they're going to give Okotoks a run for their money, and it's going to be a tremendous series to just to be, be a, a part, part of for them. Now, Mark, did you, are you, do you have some special guests coming up? Do you know if they're going to come up? Oh, I'm not too sure. I'm going to have to go down there and get them to see if they will. Okay. Well, you know what? I won't make you go yet. Let's, uh, let's do the three stars here, Mark. Well, instead of... For me, instead of doing three stars, it's going to be the four stars for Absolutely. The, all four Cubs overagers. You got Corey Brown, Ian Johnson, Logan Mayer, and Derek Janelle. And, you know, whatever they're doing after their hockey career, best wishes to them. Yes, absolutely. And I know Derek said he might be futuring, going on future hockey somewhere in the maybe the East Coast Hockey League. Um, Johnny, I've heard about school. Not sure, but Brown was going to go to school, too. And uh, also, um, you've got Logan Marin. I know he's doing some other things, too, with work and school and stuff. So, you know what? Great four guys. Mark Keller's going to go, and he's going to go, and he's going to let me do the killer play of the game, and I'm going to say that was, uh, no, he's going to come back and maybe do that. I'm going to say, Mark, you know what it was? Cubs got off to a slow start in the five-on-threes. You know, um, getting behind two to nothing, they kind of backed in a little bit on Schaefer. Uh, Okotoks got what they wanted. They wanted to get out to a comfortable lead. They did. They scored the first couple goals. And then um, the five-on-threes. Cubs had five, three five-on-threes tonight. They had a huge one in the first period with a chance to get back. Um, and they were down by two at the time. Had they scored to make it two to one, you never know where this game goes. So that's going to be the killer's killer play of the game here tonight. And uh, you know what? Uh, can't hang your heads if you're the Cubs there. Or Cole Schaefer, boy, did he have a great game here tonight. Let's just go over the final stats here. Like we said, the shots on goal were 56 to 20 for the Okotoks Bisons tonight. Yeah, a huge margin. The Bisons really, really throwing some pucks on the net here tonight. And going over the periods by period scoring, Okotoks goes out of the first period leading 3 to nothing. They had 26 shots to 8 on the Medicine Hat Cubs. Zach Baba and Jordan Eady having two goals in the first period. Uh, Edie would go on to the hat trick here tonight for the Bisons. So he went out of the period leading three to nothing. As you can hear, the Bisons celebrating to our right in their dressing room. They're pretty loud. Uh, the Bisons outscore the Cubs two to one in the second period. Go out of the period leading five one. Shots on goal seventeen six for the Okotoks Bisons in that second period. And uh, in that period, uh, Jordan Edie completes the hat trick from Phil Dillon. Phil Dillon would score again, and then Tyler Gagnon would score the only Cubs goal here tonight from Ben Fury at the 15.03 mark. We thought that gave the Cubs a little bit of life here, and that made it 5-1 after two. Bisons would finish it off with two goals in the third period, uh, and the final score would be 7-1. Okotoks, uh, shots on goal in the third period. Okotoks, 13, Medicine at 6. Four, like we said, a three-period total of 56-20. to 20. And in the third period, it would be for the Bisons, Brody Eisenbrenner also, and Ty Fair would score for the... Um, 
Okotoks Bisons. Now, as Tim Sarchuk crushes up some cans here, we're going to get the final, also the final, some more final stats here. And can continuing on in our fourth period here. Uh, Mark Keller is desperately going down to get four special guests. Uh, we can tell you who they are, the four overage players. We're going to try to get them up here for an interview to end the broadcast. Um, while we do that, um, we'll continue along here. I want to say thank you on behalf of myself to the Medicine Hat Cubs for letting me broadcast and bring the Cubs hockey into your living room for the neck for the last uh, two seasons. It's been a blast. Um, I will be moving on myself to Saskatoon to continuing my broadcast career, hopefully, and if things go well, that'll be in the fall. So um, I'll be handing the reins over to a new host next year, and I really appreciate it and thank my time uh, for being here and being around such great guys um, and a great team here, the Medicine Hat Cubs. I'd like to thank Randy and Ferry and Shelley Mayer they've, for helping and uh, putting together the player profiles this year. I thought it was excellent. Uh, Randy doing the picture, Shelley getting all the printing done there and getting uh, her husband to help out with some of the questions and then me doing the write-ups. I thought it was a great team effort. We did a, a great job on that. Um, I'd also like to thank Tim Sarchuk on the camera and Wyatt Freed. I thought they did a great job. Tim joining us here uh, doing most of the season did a great job. Cole Phillips uh, on the security and Shane Longley. I know Shane couldn't be with us in the playoffs. Um, but Cole Phillips came up here, and he really uh, filled in admirably and making sure that nothing uh, happened to us up here. Uh, Dave Kowalchuk for working his butt off on the computer. He did a great job. Mark Keller for working his butt off on the computer. And I know when that Internet goes down, that was tough for Mark to do stats, color commentate, and Internet, and that's why sometimes there'd be a little bit of a lull, and you, you can't blame Mark there. He's got three things to do at once. And, again, I'll thank Mark for being uh, probably the greatest best and only color guy I've actually worked with. I thought he did a heck of a job, and you know what? Yeah, you helped not only fill air, Mark, you, uh, you, you spoke the truth, you gave your, your all, I thought, and you had some really, really good descriptions of the play, and you really know your hawk and what's going on. I really thank you for being a part of this with me. If it wasn't for you, I don't think I'd be here. Oh, yeah, you know, it's been a great two years calling games with you here, and so we got all four overages coming up. Absolutely. Five to ten minutes. All so. right. Okay, well, we hope the camera doesn't run out. We hope you still watch because uh, I know other people have five minutes of stuff left. Let's uh, thank some of the sponsors while we're here. We're going to go to Boston Pizza. Thank you so much for sponsoring the Power Play and doing some stuff with the program and for feeding us after the games. Wow, you guys are great at Boston Pizza. Trucker's Restaurant. I know uh, Lynn is so good to us uh, on the night crew there. Boy, what a night crew that they have over at Trucker's, Mark, uh, with Lynn and her sister. And we thank Don, the, the manager out there. It's been great coming out to truckers and for sponsoring the cubs as well the hockey hounds well the hockey hounds are the major sponsor here for the cubs we thank them uh beef eater steakhouse we wouldn't have this broadcast if it wasn't for beef eater steakhouse uh they've done a great job in uh supporting us throughout the the season and playoffs and you know what the whole cubs players and management here and you know the players have really treated us with class and you know i really have, have enjoyed working with them especially the you know what logan and and Tanner, you can't even single out anybody. Derek, Janelle, Kyle Funks, all of them. Browns, you know, you see them around the town. They're just classy individuals, and, you know, you hope they go on to some, some big things in their career. Whether, it, whether it's in hockey or whether it's in uh, a school or a job, you, you always wish them the best. Yeah for, sure. yeah, for sure. You know, I had the pleasure of playing hockey with them, most of them, and stuff like that. And not only are they class acts on the ice, but off the ice, they're real good guys, and that's what you want to be. That's what you want to be a part of your hockey team. Absolutely, and uh, you know, as we continue along, I know Posh Wash does the jerseys. We'll thank them. They did a great job this year. Um, and there's more. There's Days Off Pub over there. There's the Liquor Box. We've got Crescent Heights, IDA Pharmacy. We'd like to thank all the sponsors over there. If we miss any, just we're giving you a shout out here, just of some that we can actually see from here. Um, and it's been great. You know, the Kinplex staff. We'd like to thank them, Jeff MacArthur, and. All the guys here that have, the operators, they've done a great job here uh, supporting us and putting up with us, moving tables and stuff up the stairs. So they've been really classy as well. Yeah, you know, I just want to thank everyone, like you just mentioned, for sponsoring the Cubs and just a great year for us and not only for us, but for the Cubs making it to the playoffs here too. Oh, what a great year it was, you know, to call some playoff hockey. And, uh, you know, Mark, always remember these times working with you. Um, the end of an era, a two-year era, kind of brings tears to our eyes. You know, Tim Sarchuk, he's just really wanted to get out here and get some food, but he doesn't know how, how much it means. So Mark Keller, yes, he is going into retirement. I, you know what? Mark will never retire. I'm sure he'll find himself somewhere in the Junior C Leagues. 
maybe joining me somewhere, calling uh, Urban Recyclers home games or something. Mark? Walsh Whiskey yeah. Jackets, maybe? Milk River Cowboys. Yeah, we know what. we got to start a team out there, I think. Who knows, but yeah, it's been a great two years calling games with you, and this is my last game after the great two years here. So It's, it's been good. You know, it's been it's been great. Uh, really have uh, I've appreciated the, the, the chance to call games and... Uh, to see all the, 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 the you know the good tight hockey games that have been here and and everything it's been it's been great so as we continue to await uh, we're not just rambling on people we're waiting for our four overages to come up here and uh, again we'll thank Bill Burrard and the Cubs management for making this possible I really appreciate them letting me do this and all our viewers out there um, Brad Soans I know he's an avid watcher so we thank Brad out there. I know Lorena from Crestwood was watching, so that's cool. Hi, Lorena. How's it going? Did you buy me some Lego? Um, you know, Shelly Mayer out there watching from Calgary. We wish her all the best coming home. Uh, um, I think it's Marion Fury uh, was watching. Dan Janelle, right, from down in Ontario. Don't know if he's there anymore. We say hi to all of them. We had some awesome Coaldale fans writing in stuff, which was really cool, and uh, asking us if we want to come call games down there. Actually, we are open to that. Not, not lying, we are open to that. We'd have to get our own thing going, but we are open to that, so you never know what could happen next year. Byron Northey, yes. Uh, he didn't really do anything, but we'll give a shout-out to ooh, to him. Um, Shane Longley um, and Brad Zones for calling each other vicious names over the last couple seasons. So, But you know what? Um, let's go through the, the careers of four... Uh, really good young men. We'll start with uh, Corey Brown, and Corey came in here two years ago, I believe, was recruited there with by Dave Kowalchuk and Bill Berard and Barry Adams, and uh, the brother of Shane Brown, former Tiger, and you know, he, he wears an assistant captain. He had 60-some 60, 60 points last year, was up in the top five in scoring. Moves over to defense this year. Was a little upset on his point numbers, but boy, did he play stellar on, on defense, blocking shots, and providing that overage leadership. Oh, yeah, you know, he Got, it's hard to transition from forward to defense and he came out he added that key piece to the Cubs blue line to get them another uh, veteran defenseman back there and just what can you say about him he just on and off the ice he's just a tremendous guy and he's a great guy in the locker room. Alright we'll move along I agree with you 100% number 19 Ian Johnson and I believe Johnny's been here four years and I remember he was here even with uh, Scotty Phillips former defenseman for the Cubs and you know Johnny I see him around Crestwood working out and boy He's always a pleasure to talk to, always a happy person, and boy, he laid it on the line here, blocking shots, logged a lot of minutes out there, and I really thought he, he really brought uh, some character to that Cubs blue line. Yeah, yeah. Good you know, captain, too. Yeah, like you're saying, he's a four-year vet, and he's well, him and Brown all here on defense playing together. They were a great, top four to, or great uh, pairing on D, and what can you say? Like I'm going to say about the rest of them, they're all tremendous uh class acts on and off the ice they're lighting the dressing room and you know they're going to be missed here absolutely and then we look back on uh logan mayor now the captain of the medicine Hat cubs and what can you say about logan probably the best beard in the heritage junior hockey league how long it took him to grow that one i don't know it was awesome and uh boy i i have to say he's one of the nicest uh people that i've ever met uh he's just like his mom and dad and tanner he is such a pleasure to talk to and you know what, anytime I needed an interview, this guy would, would show up. Uh, anytime I needed something something positive, he always had something great to say, and that's what makes a captain, I think, is laying it on the line, blocking shots, logging minutes, good on the power play, and boy, uh, this guy has he's got such good character and humility, and he's a really, like, he's a good person, a good human being overall. Oh, yeah, you know, and... Just As are all of them, but, you exactly, know... Exactly, you know, just between him and Derek Janelle, they've probably had... We're getting to him, too. ...close to... <laughs> Five six hundred block shots on the year and closing down the lanes. Yeah, that's what that's what you need, right? They they're all heart and soul type players and Logan just like you said, he's just a great, nice guy and just a pleasure calling games for them. Absolutely. And then uh, last but not least, totally, is uh, Derek Janelle and my goodness, whenever again, whenever I needed an interview, this guy can ramble on and he knows his hockey holy. He's got such knowledge, and, and his English is so good when he gives interviews. It's unbelievable. Like, it's, 
it all sounds like NHL style, this guy. He comes in and he can just talk about anything. He's gotten me out of a few jams when I've had questions where I wasn't able to ask. I wasn't sure what to ask. Derek Janelle just steps right in and gives me three minutes or something. And I'm like, thanks, Gino. I, there's the free game notes, right? So there's another great uh, individual. Anytime uh, I needed some help getting other players or uh, getting people to, to come help, Derek Janelle was right there. And he's another great leader, captain last year. Uh, assistant captain this year goes from forward to defense no questions asked lays his body on the line uh, takes face-offs goes up front plays on the funk line he was key in that series against Coldale. there's another great human being that I've been uh, fortunate enough to be around this last years yeah you know Derek you know he came down from junior a he's been here for two and a half years I believe yeah and, and a great attitude right yeah just a great attitude coming down he provided that mentorship for uh the Cubs and he provided that leadership in the locker room and that's what you that's what you need if you're the Cubs guys that come down from junior A and they're just great team guys to play in front of your hometown fans. Sorry can you turn the camera around here comes the couple guys here in black walking up the stairs this is going to be good as it's pretty tough for these guys to come up here and come up the stairs here and we thank them for their time here and it's going to be pretty emotional one here pretty tough Thanks a lot, boys, for making the long trek up here. It's it's a pretty tough one here, but uh, you know what? That's the kind of guys, that's the kind of individuals these guys are. That's just perfect. Of course they would turn that on right hey, now. Hey, just uh, don't play any music because I don't want to start balling again. I almost lost it twice already, so oh, don't geez. play any music. All right? No, we got your mic on, right? I think you're just, it's on? Yeah, it's on. All yeah, right. Yeah. Wow. I can sure, sure smells like you guys played a lot of hockey here. Hey, thanks a lot, guys, for coming up here on this notice. I know it's it's tough be in the last game but uh anybody else who wants to go first anybody want to you want to go yeah, first yeah all right your thoughts you know what let's not talk about this this game let's talk about the season what a season yeah. it's been oh, for yeah. this team yeah yeah it's been awesome uh awesome for most of us a uh, couple seasons now so uh it's been awesome and um i uh can't speak highly enough of uh, the coaches and and uh, the young guys who came in and bought into the system and uh, just, yeah, really proud of the guys, for sure. Absolutely, and I'm sure they're they're proud of your leadership overall out there. And uh, we'll just, you know what, we'll just keep passing the mic. We'll go to Logan. We'll just keep going around the horn. How does it feel? You know, that was pretty classy. We thought of Brad and Blaine putting you all, all four of you guys on the ice. What a class act that was. Oh, for sure. And th those guys know. I mean, they realize that, you know, it's, it's our last game and they want us to be out on the ice. And, and uh, I think the four guys here, you know, we gave a lot to this team this year. And uh, we got what we, we we got what we put in, and uh, for them to do that for us at the end there, that uh, shows a lot of character on their behalf. So it was great. Absolutely. Pass it over. Ian, Ian gets the first question. I don't want to make you cry. What's what's your most memorable moment of let's say of your career or, or this season? Tell me one or a couple things that you really uh, I think, stuck uh, out. I think Kyle Funk. He, he made a few memories out there watching him watching him play. That's that's something I'll I'll never forget. I love that. And then just uh, just time with the boys, you know. Yeah, uh, those are the things you never forget about playing Cubs, and, and that's what's really special. Cool. Awesome. I like it. Corey Brown, same thing, same question. The beard, obviously. <laughs> you know what we talked? I asked him. We were taking bets. How long has that, sorry, how long has that been? This has been uh, seven months, March 2nd, it was. So. Does it get itchy? It, no, it's past that stage, what, way what past that. What are we going to do tonight, like? Getting, not yet. Not no, yet. you're gonna hold this night. Okay. Yeah. There, you know what? You could have been like a like a, a you could have shaved it off for everyone here. Kind of like a, could have. Yeah. Give it to, a spectacle for the post game show. Yeah. Yeah. For, sure. for people that have no hair. Get retired up by the other dudes. Yeah. Number eleven up there. And <laughs> hey, well, did the ladies like it though? Were you lucky at? Uh, I saw you out. Uh, I won't say where we saw you, but uh, did you get lucky with that? You got to find the right ones. But yes, yes, there are a few that uh, that like the beard. <laughs> Some, one girl there. She dug it. She. I remember her saying that. She's, I dig it. I dig it. Well, the caveman look must tickle. Um, Corey Brown, your thoughts, uh, your most memorable moment. You've been here two years. You played some forward. You played some D. I don't know if you were Shane Brown on the back end, but... Way better. <laughs> way, way better, better than him. I mean... Like, can't, can't compare the two. Uh, it was just awesome with the Cubs. It's great experience, great coaching this year. And last year, I had a lot of good memories, a lot of ice time last year. A little bit different role this year, so that was fun. Couldn't jump on the funks back this year, but... Yeah? Had That's... a great year with the boys. Went to the South Finals, so you can't ask much more than that. No, and what a South Finals it was... Uh, I guess we'll pass the mic uh, back to Logan Mayer here, best beard in the HJHL. Um, your most memorable moment, you've been here a little bit, and uh, got to be playing with your brother too. That's got to be something else. That, eh? That's pretty special, you know, to play with your brother for the last two years here, and then to be his defense partner as well. Um, so that was special. But i got to say, for me, you know, uh, taking Coldale out, 
Um, yeah. That that was huge for me. You know, I all year they they've been a nemesis of us. So I mean, to take those guys out in uh, first round playoffs and especially to do it uh, four to one, uh, I felt pretty good, especially with the group of guys we got. So I got to say that's it's one thing that'll stick with me forever. So well, and you know, Blake Foster, you know, the hockey man he is called five games. He had the biggest smile ever. You know, and that was that was priceless. You know, so I'll remember that. But Blaker, yeah, for yeah, sure. Blaker, Derek, yeah. Same Work, thing? Working at the golf course was that the most? No, just kidding. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Someone texted That's, in. No, Someone sorry. texted That's in. A long, long okay. time ago, yeah. Yep. But uh, really proud that I worked at Kanawha Golf Course. Yeah, really. Proud. Oh, okay, okay. No, but that's not my my most memorable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Usually you're good um, at this, eh? This no, talking yeah. thing. Uh, I just don't want to have another waterworks here. Um, my most memorable Cubs moment. Um, I probably got to agree with Logan there on the the win in cold or against Coldale and all three of those games that were in overtime. Uh, you know, I've uh, it's been a long road, but I don't think I've ever felt that high before. Um, uh, as much as uh, as when, when March scored there at the end, uh, it was a it was we were on, we were all on cl- cloud nine. So I'd probably say that one and uh, and like Logs, I got to play with my brother. It's um, that was uh, pretty pretty special. Not a lot of guys get to do that. So. Uh, yeah, two special moments for sure. Awesome. Anybody you'd like to thank out there, we'll keep passing it around. We can go back to Logan. And anybody you'd like to say, would you like to say hi to mom? I guess she's watching yeah, out there. Yeah, mom, mom, yeah. Hey, hey, mom. She hey. was really avid, and, and so she, was Calvin Heller and she Mitch's was, dad. So yeah, you better say watching. hi to Shelly. I said, and I said I would. I would try to gear up as much as I could for the call. But Yeah, definitely. No, to you guys. You guys did a great job this year, Cavs. Yeah, uh, thanks, you know, you no and Mark. Problem. And uh, to the coaches and, and the organization. I mean, really, I mean, we wouldn't be where we were without the coaching this year. Uh, Blaine and Cobb were there. So a really big shout-out to them and to you guys as well. So Thank thanks, you. Thanks I appreciate lot, watching you too. Ian Johnson, product of Davidson, Saskatchewan. Home of Reese Dino as well. You betcha. Craig McNabb, Corey Sage. We got, we got a few. He's got more. Got he few. just outdid me. Absolutely. Get that mic from him. He just outdid me. Let's all make, Go ahead. Let's make a sign for him. Uh, you know, I just I want to thank everyone who's who's kind of been around the Cubs over the last four years, really. Uh, coming in kind of as an outsider a long time ago here. Uh, all the boys back in the first year, they really welcomed me in and kind of kind of set me up to, to be a bit of a leader of the team here. And and so I, I got to thank thank them and then thank everyone who's who's come in and, and joined kind of along the way. They've like these guys here, these four leaders here. They've been or these three leaders, sorry. They've been nothing but nothing but great guys to work with. Cobber and and Blaine, they're 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 the reason we're here. We made it this far, so they they really, I my hats off to them. They I got nothing but good things to say about them. So uh, just thanks a lot is all I can say. Awesome. Corey Brown's up next. I gotta agree with them. Obviously, you guys did a heck of a job doing all the calls for us and all the dedication you put into. Everyone that do with the Cubs, obviously the family back up at Sony Plan. I know they're probably watching right now. So awesome, more viewers. First time That's they've good. seen first time they've seen my face in probably a couple of weeks, three weeks or so. So up close, anyways. And yeah, just hats off to the coaches and to the boys that put everything into it. So it was awesome. Absolutely. And Derek, yeah. I don't think you got a chance. We'll no, I don't want to. I don't want to miss anybody. But uh, uh, definitely, you guys again. I got to agree. Uh, you know, that's better than late night TV, is what I hear. So yeah. both you guys did a great job. Everybody here did a great job. And uh, uh, everybody I've played with throughout the years, I think um, it's, I've played with a lot of people and met a lot of great people, uh, coaches and players alike. And and um, and then uh, for sure, the, the the coaches this year have been awesome, and just the people around the team. Uh, who donate their time you know they don't get paid to, to be here and, and they just they love this team and, and they love their town and uh, and they love uh, helping us so um, hats off to those guys it's uh, we couldn't do it without them give you one more question I can see you guys want to get changed what do you see for the future where will you be what would you like to be doing you tell me uh, I don't know I'm not sure for me personally I don't know um, I'd like to, if I can keep playing hockey somewhere but uh, that's not something that I've given a whole lot of thought to I just been really focused on the playoffs and the yep. guys here obviously and um, um, but uh, yeah I mean whatever happens happens I'd like to stick with the game somewhere if I could if, if I'm not playing I would <laughs> maybe coach or or um, uh, get into scouting or whatever it might be I just uh, I want to stick with the game somehow if I can and could and you could you give that. Mark Keller some tips for what well, he needs a little bit of for tips. For coaching or playing? or he, Mark Keller doesn't well, need see, any pl- we, tips for playing. Well, Have see, you seen that guy block shots? I've seen yeah. him shoot from center ice at the Tigers game. Yeah. And I have to say I scored seven and he scored four. Oh, he started oh. ripping them, though. Eh? I was going along the ice, you know. Well, I was hey, ring-adding the stuff, and he was not, ripping them. It's eh? not all about scoring goals. This guy blocks oh. more shots than... Uh, than five, we counted 401 for you. For me? No, well, we're Well, lying, Mark's got more than that, so... Oh, wow. And I was with no equipment, so... 
So Mark, Mark, uh, Mark needs no tips, but ball hockey killer, eh? So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Mark, <laughs> Mark needs, Mark needs no to, tips for me, that's for sure. Not to hurry you, but we got about a minute and a half before we run out of tapes. So. Well, you know, <laughs> being 22, you got to grow up and, uh, you know, start uh, taking responsibility a little bit. So I probably won't go to school, um, <laughs> but I'm gonna probably going to work. And uh, like Gino, um, I'd like to keep playing hockey if I could. Um, however, you're just going to take whatever life throws at me and take the opportunities that come at me and... Uh, Roll with it, man. Well, I heard B and B Dollhouse needs a bouncer. Would you be interested in that at all? Or yeah, the, the only tough thing on me is my beard, there, Zondi. Yeah, so I, I don't know. <laughs> Johnson, we'll see him at Crestwood working out. <laughs> oh, absolutely, Zondi. Yeah, yeah. Nice. got every keep, day I get that. Got to keep up the figure. So, uh, no, I uh, I got a good thing going here uh, with power engineering. So I'm, sweet. I'm That's cool. I'm just gonna keep doing that and and yeah. So see where see where that goes and. That's uh, that's my plan so far. I'm sticking to sticking around Medicine Hat, and he's set. that's much about much it. So <laughs> and then he's gonna go to. I'm gonna get married and have five yeah. kids. Yeah. And yeah. Well, oh, let's not speed things up too much. It. <laughs> take our time. Take our time. We got one minute, so we got to get Corey Brown in there. Just go back to Lethbridge and finish my schooling. Nice. Become a teacher and teach all their kids when they grow up and Ooh, throw them in detention all the time. And can you imagine teaching Gino's fun. kid? He'd have a lot to say, I think, and it would be all like perspective, like knowledge. You'd be like. Yeah, we couldn't get it out because of this. And as long as it's not a religious class, I think I can handle it. Oh, so wow. It should be all right. <laughs> well, I don't know if beards are part of the religion here or if that's got to be no facial hair. Well, you know what, guys? We thank you so much, Mark and I, for uh, being around you guys. You've been a class act, and you've been such, such, like, the humanity here and the character you guys. Anytime I needed an interview, anytime, you know, I, didn't, I was bugging you. I, I appreciated everything. Um, you know what? I couldn't ask for the four more individual guys to be around and boy thanks a lot for giving us entertaining hockey you guys got us got the cubs back in the playoffs second place you knocked out coldale that's huge and uh you know what i mean you did a heck of a job so we thank you guys and the community does too and thanks so much guys yeah, thank, thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you take care boys awesome. thank, you. thank you thanks mark thank you thank you thanks thanks Four classy individuals heading off here, and uh, their junior careers are over. Well, we will say good luck to those boys in the future. Time for us to head out. Cam Zondi, Mark Keller, Tim Sarchuk, bid you all a very pleasant good night. I'll be heading to Saskatoon in the fall, so there'll be a new guy at the helm. But I thank everyone out there for watching this. Thank you for being a part of Cubs hockey. Everyone out in Medicine, like we say, thank you so much. Have a great one. It's been a great season of hockey. We'll see you all somewhere soon. Good night, everyone.